Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, friends and family beyond the binary, good evening and welcome to more Collegiate Overwatch here at NECC. My name is Warren Jungle God Hammond and I am joined on the mic once again by LaFon. How are you doing tonight? Doing pretty well. Excited to get things underway. And I mean, with uh, Daylight Savings being what it is, it's not really so much nighttime yet as you can see the sunlight <laughs> slot there behind me. Yeah, but, that's uh, fair. <laughs> but uh, no, excited to get underway with some action uh, on, in the games we have ahead of us. Before we get to the teams, though, let's talk about the maps that we have at uh, our disposal for the gameplay here today, Jungle God, because it is going to be a set map. We'll start off on Li Zhang Tower, moving through hybrid escort, hybrid control, and then if necessary, a tiebreaker uh, escort at the end. You can see Blizzard World, Gibraltar, uh, Hollywood and Ilios for map number five and beyond. So uh, as we get into the action, though, of course, we have ESU Warriors versus Midway University up first on the schedule. And this game, uh, you know, uh, excited to see how these teams perform here tonight. Yes, as am I. Uh, the ESU Warriors right now sporting a three and one record. They've got a one match still rescheduled that they need to play uh, here from week five. Whereas Midway University uh, looking at a two and three record right now. So both of these kind of middle of the pack in this tournament and excited to see, you know, if they can push themselves a little bit further. Yeah, and I mean, you know, for ESU, they're uh, they're they're still they're still hunting. They're still doing pretty well for themselves overall in terms of the scoreline, mm -hmm. right? They do have that one loss, as we said, but uh, you know, a couple of a three zero in there, three uh, one uh, earlier in the season. So a team that's really been, I think, uh, a little bit more consistent in their scoreline. Obviously, from Midway University, they're they're hunting. They're 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 on, looking at the scorelines here. I mean, their three their their two victories were um, uh, pretty dominant, a three one and a three zero yeah. on that side. A couple of two three losses, so they had to go to a map five. And I mean, when you have that level of Competitiveness, the two three score line doesn't seem as uh you know uh as bad as perhaps first imagined so yeah definitely a lot of expectations here for midway university because i think they really do have it in them to have that level of performance that we've come to expect so yeah definitely a lot on the table here in terms of that of the win uh, and i mean for midway if you get to that 500 right three and three you're yeah. uh, you're pretty happy i think with your performance Oh, I think you absolutely are. And that is certainly what they're going to be gunning for today. Starting things off on Lee Jong Tower, like you said before, on control. That's going to give us an opportunity to see a few different play styles, see a few different compositions potentially, or see if these teams just run a run out with one thing, you know, one composition they like, they want to uh, try and dominate with. So going to be very interesting to see exactly how this plays out in this first map. Yeah, and I expect comfort picks to be sort of the name of the game here, right? Run what you're good mm -hmm. at as uh, as we kind of get into the match in just a moment. So, uh, yeah, my expectations are going to be a little less um, uh, in, in terms of like perhaps a composition that would come to expect, like the wrecking ball, you know, dive, but more what Midway and ESU are more comfortable playing. And so we'll see how that uh, comes to the fore once we get into the action in just a moment. Looks like uh, these teams are at least flirting with a couple of different looking compositions. I'll be curious to see if Disabato goes over to the Reinhardt, considering Halbert is hovering over that Symmetra at the moment. Of course, on the other side, we have Midway University looking at this uh, bulldozer composition with the uh, double main tank to start out with. But once again, that's Symmetra. So let's see how both these end up. ESU Warriors with this composition, they're going to be looking to surround and conquer this Midway composition. We're going to see them both start to push out towards the point. TP's coming in from both sides. It's going to be a nice rock to the face of Winston there to start things off. But it's going to be Midway University just demolishing the competition to start things out here. A lot more cleave uh, from Midway University, especially with Tireman on the Winston, right? They're able to get in close uh, beyond, you know, the, sort of the, the defensive abilities of the... Uh, uh, of the immortality field, once that gets uh, taken out, then the cleanup crew comes in. And I mean, look at the tanks, they're far ahead. And it doesn't hurt that Vapo, with a uh, pretty solid um, anti nade, brought, you know, the, uh, the health pools, prevented them from being healed. So ESU have to reassess their situation, reassess the aggression that they took, and kind of try and come back in. Michael going to be the focal point of this engagement, especially with those rockets that aren't going to be able to be denied as there's no Diva on the field. We're going to see D Nazi go down very low, as is Jaeger to this Farah. Uh, they're just getting so much value in the backline. Look at that 4K with the barrage 
almost a six. They're able to clean up that point and the ESV Warriors take the point away from Midway. And that's kind of the highlight I was I was talking about right there with no Diva to kind of keep the Farah in check. It's all on the hit scan. And that's a really tough thing to ask when the Farah has the pocket in the play as DH Kaka kind of brought forward. So ESU playing off that unmitigated Farah and they're trying to continue that in this next fight. We're likely going to see this Nano Boost committed early, likely onto the Winston. Nice TP to point. That's going to give control um, at least temporarily over to Midway University. They cap it in short order. Now we see the Nano Boost committed. Shatter's going to land. Take out one. And with that, the ESU Warriors are having a rough time of it here on point. Yeah, unfortunately, it is really up to Vanilla Jack to kind of be the difference maker against the Earth Shatter. And I, I say that, you know, somewhat tongue in cheek because it's very, very easy to kind of outweigh the Sigma's barrier and, uh, you know, go for a Shatter there. So you have to choose between defending your team or kind of playing anti-Shatter. And there, it's it's a no-win situation. So the ESU Warriors <laughs> get taken out as a result. Now, I mean, a little a little, uh, a little lacking in the resource department are the ESU Warriors. Midway uh, looking a little bit more loaded for Bear, but Vanilla Jack trying to build up to that Gravitic Flux. We're going to see the Photon Barrier used right before the Gravitic Flux comes in. All the members of Midway get slammed down, but the Immortality Field is there. But everybody just has a sliver of health. The ESU Warriors are getting everybody off of this point. And another swap, this time in favor of ESU. Yeah, it's uh, back and forth so far. And I mean, looking at the percentage gained, right, for Midway University, it's a remarkable. It, it's actually pretty decent uh, from them, right? So they're 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 hovering at that 90% uh, mark and so are basically one fight away. If they can get another teleport to point as they've been uh, want to do this far or, or thus far in this round, then there's real a real chance that they take this round away from the ESU Warriors. But um, I mean, the ESU Warriors, they need to be a little bit more careful on that retake, uh, on that rotate, cannot allow this teleport to come through for free. No, they certainly can. Uh, that was, I think, one of the big uh, reasons that Midway University took that last fight. They just got to point, got set up, and it was game over from there. Dinazi has this attack visor. We're going to see a TP into the back line. Right back out comes Jaeger, but Halbert's going to be there to take them out. Attack visor now committed by Dinazi, but it's going to be the DPS of ESU Warriors who are coming up big right now. Immortality field committed, but once that's out of the way, it's time for the barrage. Got really clean stuff there. Michael actually doing a ton of work in that fight to dodge not only the um, the tactical visor, but then the you know play around the defense matrix, which has stepped into the four right tire man moving over to the diva. Um, you know we talked about that at the top of the round. That's one of the big counters to the Farah, but Michael playing uh, pretty well in the skybox to avoid that. Now I mean final fight is this situation. The Sabato almost got taken out nearly at the primal rage, and that's a little unfortunate for them. That really is, especially because that Nano Boost was likely going to go onto them too. Huge move comes in to prevent Wizard King from getting that pin kill. But in the meantime, a couple more have materialized for Midway. The Immortality Field up. There's nothing that the ESU Warriors can do. Point flips back over to Midway, and it's going to be tough for them to touch. 95%. They do have the Primal Rage, remember, from Disabito here, who's going to be the first one to contest. 97%. They'll be able to keep this one contested for a little while. They're going to jump in at the last possible moment. That Tesla Cannon getting a lot of cleave damage in. It's going to be the Primal Rage that finishes off of Bapo. Uh, it's going to be Disabato getting a lot of value out of this. Deadly Pants is down, though, but there's no supports online for Midway. And with overtime clicking over, ESU Warriors may have just done it. Come back and take this point out from under Midway. And we'll take the first sub map here on Lee Jong. Yeah, snuck, snuck away in the back line was the Winston, really. Disabito was the big difference maker in that fight, right? Uh, I, I highlighted that was the player that was going to touch the objective. That was the one that was going to contest. And critically, what happened there was using the Tesla Cannon to wither away the backline's health before turning into the Primal Rage, right? Not overcommitting the Primal Rage early meant that, mm -hmm. um, you know, got the, the two supports down very weak. And then, you know, when the Immortality Field was used to kind of play defensively, that's when they used the Primal Rage to knock them out of it um, and then confirm the final blow. So excellent tank play there from the ESU Warriors um, that gives them that first round. And 199, very, very close. These teams are quite well matched, in my opinion. Uh they absolutely are. It, it was a very back and forth affair as well. It wasn't, you know, like 99 to zero and then 99 to 99, right? It, it went back and forth several times during this map. Even the last fight was a swap 
We're going to see uh, very similar compositions come out this time. We're going to get the TP to point. And Teenade hits many of the members of the ESU Warriors. Bapo getting a huge uh, amount of value out of that ability. And with that, Midway takes the point. I mean, sometimes it's as simple as just use a utility uh, resource that denies um, the value of one other, right? The anti aid means that even though the Immortality Field prevents uh, the players of ESQ Warriors from being eliminated, it doesn't allow them to heal back up. And so once that fades away, the uh, turrets are able to clean up the remainder of the damage. So Midway University just playing some smart heads up Overwatch to give themselves that first victory. Now we're going to see ESU Warriors swap over to this uh, double... To this double off tank composition, uh, we've seen this a few times relatively recently here and in other leagues. I'm uh, really curious to see if this Abato can find value on this hog or if they're just going to end up being an old battery for Midway University as this fight begins to break out. Halberd going down very low for ESU Warriors, but the support is there in time to keep them up. Look does not land for Disabato, so going to have to wait a little bit for that to come back in. In the meantime, the Nazi has been picked, and the Shield of Wizard King going down very low, so low that the hook comes in. Excellent pick coming out from the uh, Disabato on ESU Warriors. We're going to see the Photon Barrier now committed to try and pull as much percentage out of this point as they can, maybe even turn things around, but with another pick on the Bapo, things are going a little bit rough for Midway. They do get a couple of counter picks courtesy of the Photon Projector. Barrage lands. There's the um, stun and the self-destruct. Gonna take out Michael. And with that, Midway holds. Yeah, a little too long of the fight there for ESU. Even though they get the superior uh, pickoffs and the earlier pickoffs, Midway University just outlasts with the photon barrier. So well played. And I mean, this now puts them at that 75% mark. I mean, just uh, just to hunting for this hook, but um. A lot of time being taken away here. Uh, there's a good elimination to start things off. Midway University have to play on their back foot here. That they do. They're going to pop the Amplification Matrix early on. And Halbert with a phenomenal 4K tack visor will get rid of everything that was left of Midway. 90% <laughs> though on the uh, alt or on the counter for this round for Midway University. So one clean fight is really all they need. And uh, I mean, they're just as capable of holding that combination of the tactical visor and amplification matrix, right? Um, and the ESU Warriors have significantly less survivability. What with the uh, Reinhardt, sorry, Roadhog and uh, Sigma. We're going to see the whole hog come out, but it's getting uh, denied a lot of value here. It does find a kill, able to take. Uh, tire man off of the map. This Abadu takes a quick nap on the point, but they're going to be back up and in it relatively quickly. In the meantime, though, the rest of the ESU Warriors have combined for a tremendous amount of kills. Michael in the back line cleaning things up, and with that, Midway will have to try again. I mean, Michael, like, uh, <laughs> uh, just a completely uh, un un unmarked there on the flank, does not get recognized, and, uh, you know, uh, almost pretending to be a player on Midway University themselves gets the eliminations <laughs> there. So, well done by... Uh, by Michael to clean that up and has brought now the 50% mark. So half the game contested. Wow. That's a great tele Whoa! Oh, so close. So close. Oh my Jaeger gosh. with the teleport there. Uh, nice try, even if it didn't work out. Yeah, that certainly was a great heads up moment. A good reaction time right there. Going to see the app matrix committed by Midway Eagle, but it's got to be the supports who fall very quickly. And with that, it's easy pickings for Michael. Yeah, I, I, just a good combo, right? Uh, the application matrix goes up, and so Vanilla Jack making sure that uh, nobody can shoot through it with, a t with uh, using the Gravitic Flux and staying out of LOS. Uh, and then Michael gets the right focus elimination, takes out Midway Eagle, takes out the chance of the Immortality Field, and then uh, everyone's H half HP or less, and you're you're able to clean up very easily. Well played by uh, Midway there, or by ESU, sorry. This Abato almost gets another nasty hook, taking uh, the main tank off the side, but they're going to be there to block it. We're going to have the Death Blossom come in. It is good for one, despite the anti-nade hitting them. They will go down eventually. It's a 99 to 90 on point right now. Two picks either way. Crucially, though, Midway still has both of their supports. That is until this Abato has something to say about it. And with that, the ESU Warriors will take out Midway University and go up 1-0 to zero in this matchup. Something that ESU Warriors have uh, done more consistently toward the end of the map, and a big reason as to why they won out that final fight on Lijiang Tower, is using uh, tank ultimates to deny Midway University's impact 
uh, you know, initiation. We're going to see Michael come in with the play of the game here. Excellent stuff on the Farah. But I'd like to specifically highlight at the end there, the Roadhog ultimate denies the Earth Shatter, and then that allows the shield to block it out, right? We were somewhat teasing earlier about how the Sigma has a tough time against the Reinhardt, but there you show how, as a team, you can get a lot of value um, if you combo well. So big Roadhog play there by Sabato. Big play as a team from ESU Warriors as they take the first lead of the series here on Lijiang Tower for a 1-0. We are going to be headed to a new map now, Lafon. It will be Blizzard World. So it's going to be uh, now time for Midway to see if they can turn their fortunes around here on this map. And I'm going to be curious to see if we see a different look come out from both of these teams here. Uh, you know, because it, potentially even Double Shield can be a nice composition to run here. Uh, Blizzard World, one of those maps where you can really run a lot of different things, uh, if I'm being perfectly honest. Yeah, and I think one thing we will we will highlight though is that Midway University doesn't really change up their composition too much, right? A couple of mm -hmm. uh, a couple of uh, individual selections changes. We saw the Cassidy, we saw the Soldier, um, but overall a more stable uh, a selection from their side. Um, so I would expect them to be a little bit more consistent. We might see we might see the double shield come in, but uh, I mean obviously on ESU's uh, terms, they've been a little bit more flexible, a little bit more willing to shift off of what they initially started off on, right? We saw the high tempo composition on. On Night Market, they came over to the Reinhardt, or sorry, the Reinhardt initially on, on round two on Garden and then found that wasn't working so switched over the Roadhog. So, um, yeah, clearly a little bit uh, of ESU's uh, style focuses on, you know, uh, counter counterpicking um, rather than playing their, their their chosen composition, neither of which is correct nor incorrect. It's simply a style that right. can be successful. Um, it just showcases that these two teams have different um, sort of ideas uh, about Overwatch when it comes down to it. Yeah, that they do. And it's, it's, it's been an interesting, you know, to see these two different ideas go head to head. And right now they're both approving very, um, very reasonable, I guess I could say, or, or very successful, you know, 99 to 99, 99 to 90. Both of these teams uh, really, you, you put it best earlier, you said very, very evenly matched. And I couldn't agree more as we load into Blizzard World. I've been. I would be so bad at that. You know those games that the Overwatch uh, 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 account sometimes puts up. Like, which map is this? I'm so bad at those. <laughs> I am so bad. I was just reminded right. of it when we were staring at Pylon Terrace there. Like, yeah. I, if you had showed me that and I had no context which map it was, there's no way I would have guessed Blizzard World. Yeah. No, I was staring at that, thinking to myself, where is this on Blizzard World? Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I I love production because production finds so many places in these maps that i've never seen before i mean even after having been casting this game for so long now i'm still surprised by the spots that we see uh, there's so much really cool stuff that the devs put into this game in my defense i play on uh, all low textures for that quote competitive advantage I'm in, uh, <laughs> yes <laughs> into the game now we go though and it's going to be midway university there it is the composition more reinhardt this time they're going to be in the may out so a little bit more uh high uh, you know a little bit more stabilization midway through esu still going with that off tank look and uh you know uh, can be surprised if they get rushed at but do have a lot more long range poke yeah, that they do. They're going to be able to keep this high ground under their control fairly well, but that's going to give the point over to Midway University. And now uh, the turns have tabled, Lafon. Now it's uh, almost going to be Midway University defending this point from the aggressors, the ESU Warriors. We're going to see D-Nazi have to use their ice block early on to keep themselves alive, but when they pop out of it, they're able to get a pick. And one tick has turned into two and will likely become three here, Lafon, although... They, uh, midway down their Baptiste, that could make this initial push difficult. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it's it's still a little awkward here because Midway has their spawns right there, and the, those freezes are going to come in so clutch with a cleanup. Even with, you know, uh, uh, Denazi being taken out, uh, it's not enough to stymie any sort of forward momentum. So Midway University playing to their strengths, something you really do like to see, right? They post up on the objective and say, ESU, come to us. And ESU has no way to really aggress against that stable composition on the point. And now they're going to try and turn this into a snowball. What would the amplification matrix in hand? Midway Eagle looking for the opportune time to pop it. They're going to do that right as they come around this corner. That's going to force the kinetic grasp out of <clears throat> Vanilla Jack. Self-destruct lands. That catches Bapo. And the rematch gets two more. That's Midway University falling almost single-handedly to Disabato. That's a tough one to... That's tough. That's really tough, right? Yeah. Um, sometimes, yeah. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes a self-destruct can just turn a fight by its own. And there it does so uh, quite handily. 
And for Midway University, it's 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 a hard one to it's a heartbreaker. You know that that's a fight that you kind of want wish you'd taken uh, more convincingly. But they still have tools to work with here, and critically have self destruct of their own, so they might just pull some magic um, of their of theirs in this turn uh, of a fight if they can get to the high ground and start to control space a little bit. It's gonna be five ultimates on each side for these teams. We see the. Valkyrie popped early on. Wizard King decides to drop down to the low ground, but now they're getting pummeled pretty hard by the members of Midway University. Speaking of which, Dead Eye comes out, doesn't find any kills, mostly lands into the shield of Wizard King, but that's going to take it down very low. Shatter comes out, Vanilla Jack on the ground, but the self destruct again coming in big. This time, going to get two from Tire Man. Uh, the remake doesn't catch any this time, but the damage has already been done, and this card is underway once again. And Jaeger actually on the flank here, trying to pull some magic out with the Death Blossom, forced to recall or forced to hit that Wraith Walk, though. So back to the objective. And I mean, ESU has gotten a couple of pickoffs. They're trying to bring this one back. Yeah, they certainly are. Um, and with the DMAC coming in on the Tire Man, things are starting pretty well for them. Three and a half minutes left on the clock. But at this, ESU Warriors have found a nice hold here. Tire Man going for a cheeky uh, attempt at a. Uh... Cheeky attempt at the, the call mech as the fight was already over, and they'll get a D-mech for their troubles, but, um, you know, the Sabbath is going to be back in post-haste, already up to 70% there, and uh, Midway University are forced to reset. So, ESU, you know, they uh, they outlast the Blizzard, they outlast the Earth Shatter, uh, all good things there, and I mean, ESU now are sort of trending back towards the resources they need to complete this closeout. Three minutes, though, on the clock, Midway University has a lot of time here. Uh, try and play quick and force uh, ultimates to be taken away is probably the game plan they should go for here. And uh, unfortunately for them, not starting off too hot. No, it's not. The pick comes out on Jaeger. Tire Man D-Mech. Now that's going to allow Michael and Halbert almost free reign. Here comes the Dead Eye. It's going to catch Tire Man in the back line. The Flash and the Hammer coming in as well. Bapo going down very low. And DH Kafka on the Murder Moth able to get a kill as well but they're taken out relatively quickly and the ESU Warriors will hold. Oh, don't do it. Don't do it to them. Don't. Oh, this is okay. <laughs> the, I mean, it's not going to try and play for the call mech uh, again here. You can see them setting up on the flank as they try and walk in, perhaps to sneak around. And I mean, Pilot Diva, one of the quietest uh, moving players or quietest moving characters uh, in, yep. in the game. A darn sight difference from their uh, clanking uh, mech. Yeah. <laughs> All right, here they come. They're sneaking up on the back line. They've seen Bapo. They're pushing in for the final blow. Can they catch up to the team, though? The team has moved pretty far out. Oh, look at this. With the Gravitic Flux, with the rematch kill, it's going to land right on Midway Eagle. You love to see it. Huge heads up play coming out from the Sabato. They're going to be happy that we caught that one on the uh, feed. Depending on who you're a fan of, right? That is either a horror movie or uh <laughs> yes or an yes. action adventure right like that's <laughs> yeah oh my gosh but you love to see it though i mean that that you, you couldn't have yeah you couldn't have planned that better that that was just beautiful play coming out vanilla jack there with the gravitic flux as well midway university gonna have a few more ults on their uh plate this time around though but there's a minute left on the clock lafon yeah and i mean you know that esu is trying to play for that amp matrix through the tactical visor here right that's kind of their uh their expected look and there's the early start and both combo out attack visor gonna be briefly blocked by that wall the freeze comes in and with that the uh, esu warriors are going to be able to weather that storm and come out on top in this fight as well. And now we are moving into last fight territory for Midway. Yeah, I, excellent work by the Midway University supports though to keep Tire Man in mech. So has a self-destruct and can really be a difference maker in this final fight, though the accretion perhaps keeping the D.Va out of commission. And there Ooh. it is, the D.Mech comes in. So unfortunate stuff there, but credit to Midway University supports for keeping their tank player alive as long as possible. Last 20 seconds, Miracle's need to come through and it needs to be off this blizzard here. The Shatter will land, catches two. DH Kafka out of the fight. The Blizzard gonna catch a few others. We're gonna see the Gravitic Flux committed, but the Dead Eye takes out a pair for Midway University. Just a couple of members left from each team on point, but it's gonna be uh, Midway University with one more member. We see the Remek try to come in. We're gonna have another Self Destruct committed as well. Disabato gets the Remek kill on the D-Nazi. ESU Warriors coming out on top here. Can they prevent the last few members? We're gonna see Jaeger trying to get a hero play off here. DH Kafka does get 
minutes left. Bapo now back in the mix, but I think this is all but over in favor of the ESU Warriors. With Halbert coming up with a big kill and Jaeger not getting their Death Blossom off, that's going to be as far as the Warrior, or as Midway, I apologize, gets. Midway University, though, made a real effort there towards the end to stabilize that one. They were close to clawing it back from the brink, right? Talk about Jaeger's Death Blossom. If that had been able to be activated, perhaps there's a, a chance, but uh, indeed, ESU Warriors, they bend, do not break, and uh, a well-timed, uh, I mean, another well-timed play by the off-tank um, uh, for the ESU Warriors, both of them, really, as uh, the D.Va, though, the main benefactor of the eliminations, another Calmet kill. What's that, four? Um, right. More than that, actually, two. Uh, that's five in this map, I think it and was that's five. the defensive yeah. half only. Yeah, that's really kind of incredible. I mean, you know, I, I remember when the uh, when the Remake fell first, uh, you know, reared its head in this game, and it was... You know, it, it was so exciting. It was a novelty to see a rematch kill come in. But with five of them in that last map, I mean, it, it's kind of old hat at this point. It almost feels like. Um, and as we get set for this uh, for this next round, the ESU Warriors are uh, flirting with a dive composition here. And I mean, this is a this is a good uh, opening uh, gambit for what Midway University is running. Right? They only they don't yeah. have a lot of aerial threats or a counter aerial threat um in in their composition right they've got the junkrat which is unfortunately not great at dealing with the Farah. so if the esu warriors scout this out i would not be surprised uh as you see them stay on this composition especially with michael being able to really take the lead with the damages there's no one who's out there on the opposition who can really put a ton uh, of pressure onto the Farah. no you could put a little bit of pressure on with this turret but that's only as long as it stays in play and it could be uh fairly easy to take out we're going to see the ESU Warriors now take this high ground position to stage their die from. Michael going to start layering in several rockets. Yeah, without the turret, they're going to be able to push in a lot more confidently. We see a nice concussive blast moving the tank out of the way. Now Vanilla Jack in the back line looking to find some value. But the DMAC going to come in on the butt. You know what? At this point, I'm just looking at that as another opportunity to remac and find a kill. Michael, though, going to be able to clean up a few with some rockets. It's just D-Nazi and the Orisa left on point. And with that, the ESU Warriors cap. That's, uh, I, listen, sometimes you draw it up and it's as simple as, does your character get challenged by anyone on the opposing side? No. Well, uh, success is yours, Michael, you know, furthest yeah. ahead. And I, and I have to highlight the double projectile makes a ton of sense against the double shield too, right? Because Michael doesn't have to worry about the shields and Halbert can take a ton of pressure off the front line um, with, with that storm arrow. That's going to herald some changes for Midway University going over to the hit scan for Nazi and the hook as well to try and slow down DeSabado a little bit. Uh, unfortunately for them, again, no mitigation of a projectile damage. So Michael with this barrage should be able to kind of get in the back line and couple, uh, you know, get a couple of eliminations of their own. Yeah, you know, I, I mean, at, at first look, you might say like, oh, well, Midway has D-Nazi, but with the nerfs that came in to the, uh, you know, to the to the fall off damage, it's really not that great of a counter. And we can see this playing out in real time right now as Michael finds three to open things up, including Bapo, who had the Nano Boost ready to go and could have turned this fight. That was one of their win conditions out the window almost immediately, but comes in onto Disabato, but he is throwing so many fists that it just doesn't matter. And we are getting very close to a win here for ESU Warriors. And I mean, look at how much HP was fed over to the supports of the ESU Warriors. So they'll be back right quick with their uh, ultimates as well. Big Dragon Strike into the back line. Gonna find one Force Immortality Field wow. and another elimination. And this has gone from bad to worse for Midway as ESU are cleaning up. That they are. This is gonna be ESU Warriors coming away with a victory here on Blizzard World. Nothing left from Midway University to try and stop them. There might be a last moment contest, but that isn't even going to be in the cards this time around. And the ESU Warriors go up 2-0 to zero in this matchup. Really, really good stuff from them there on the attacking half, especially ESU just uh, compositionally understanding what their opponents like to run and denying them the space they need to work. So a good read from ESU. Midway definitely have some fight though in their you know in 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 their hands and i think um in the opportunity for this third map they're looking to try and bring this one back still an opportunity to prevent this from being a 3-0 sweep but they'll have to come out swinging on map number three that they will but uh before we see that potential swing come in we are going to throw it to a short break so don't go anywhere we will be right back with more overwatch
two to zero the score line as we come back from the break lafon we've got midway university going up against the esu warriors and those warriors proving an indomitable foe at least at this moment to midway yeah uh definitely uh some excellent uh adaptation midway through the series from uh from esu uh to give themselves that lead and i think that's going to be you know uh pretty helpful heading into map number three uh, you know we're going to gibraltar uh for for our uh, escort map and one of the things that we've seen from uh from esu wars is they've been able to play you know the compositions that favor that mobility favor the high ground rotations have been able to you know take value from it so i think here in this case we have to favor esu unfortunately in map number three again um even as midway tries to formulate a response and hopefully they can do so uh to give themselves a victory here Gibraltar can be a very, very tough map to yeah. complete uh, and, and occasionally even very difficult to get through the first point yeah. if the defense has just a beautiful hold on that. And Dive going to be the name of the game primarily on this map, but certainly isn't out of the question to see something else. Um, <clears throat> ESU Warriors have already shown that they're comfortable with a Dive composition, so I'm going to be looking to them at least on the attack to run out with something along those lines. Uh, but Midway University, we haven't really seen too much of that from them yet. So I'm curious to see exactly how they're going to handle this map. I mean, it, already though, a little bit of a, a difference yeah. uh, of, a, of a look from from them here, right? They've got the wisdom. They've got the wizard. Uh, yeah, they, they, do, they do have wizard. <laughs> they do. Um, but I mean, they have the Winston. There we go. Listen, I saw I saw the, the the first two letters, and I'm like, all right. My brain was like, yeah, we're we, we, yep. we've got it. It's 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 same character, right? You're good. You're good. Yeah. I've only had <laughs> what five years in this game. Unbelievable. Winston <laughs> in the black pocket now for Midway University. A little bit more, uh, a little less. Uh, uh, man, it does not stop. The hits do not stop here tonight. Uh, ESU wears a little less mobility <laughs> on their composition, right? They've just got the diva. Which, to be fair, Sabato is doing excellent work with it. But uh, yeah, certainly a little more stability on the high ground than they do uh, rotational ability. Yeah, you know, uh, dive <laughs> is the name of the game here most of the time on Gibraltar. But if you do want to run something else, it's typically uh, most well done on defense, right? This first point can be held down very, very well um, if you're running a double shield or something like what ESU Warriors have at the moment. Michael laying in a lot of damage. That's going to lead to one pick. Converts into two as well. No DPS left for Midway. And with that, there's no one to protect Bapo and Midway Eagle who fall just thereafter. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, speaking of players like almost falling, Michael there goes down to what? Like three HP, I think? Just spectacularly low. And even as Tire Man tries to, you know, chase down the soldier, the mega peel comes in from the rest of the squad. So ESU stabilize and stay alive. So now heading to this next fight, Midway looking for that pickoff. Denazi going over to the Cassidy here a little bit more. Again, more consistent damage, especially as Michael will have the tactical visor and a consistent boost with the Mercy there. Dive is going to come in now from Midway, but it is quickly dealt with. At least Wizard King is going down and out of the fight. An anti-nade hits three members, one of which goes down. Tire Man demect as well. And with Halbert looking for this flank now from the ESU Warriors, things are looking very good for them. Listen, Reaper is a very threatening character when uh, Reaper has the self-heal uh, available, right? When being able to steal, right. uh, leech damage via lifesteal. Unfortunately, the Antinae just turns uh, the Reaper somewhat toothless and it, it makes it makes that damage a lot less threatening. Because the scary part isn't the damage output of the Reaper. It's the fact that it's the damage output and your damage gets nullified. There is just, you know, a big play by Deadly Pants. And now, I mean, I expect t Mac Michael's tactical visor here to be uh, nano boosted and hit with a blue beam from the Mercy. I expect this to be very, very dominant uh, in that front line. Oh my gosh, but Jaeger's going to be able to take Vanilla Jack out of the fight almost instantly. Here comes the self destruct, though, that combined with the tac visor, the nano boost, and the Valkyrie is going to lead to a fight win here. But look at this, Lafon, I'm pretty sure ESU Warriors literally used everything. Uh, yeah. I mean, we could just read the numbers. One, yep. zero, four, <laughs> nine, five, six. That was everything. Midway University, yep. I mean, if you're a Midway fan, you're happy with that, right? Sure, you lost the oh, fight, yeah. but ESU used everything. This is the fight you now need to win. Anti-Date's going to come in early on, but Halbert is already down and out of the fight by uh, Jaeger. We're going to see the Primal Rage now committed by Wizard King, but Tire Man falls in the midst of it all. Bapo now trying to keep their team desperate alive, but the picks keep coming in in favor of the Warriors. There's two down from each side right now. Jaeger just uh, out of the fight right before they get that Death Blossom out. 
Wizard King looking to finish off Vanilla Jack, but Vanilla Jack just hiding away from that Tesla cannon. Yeah, uh, doing a great job actually, and also nullified the jump pack with the with the accretion, right? So stays alive. Yeah. Um, and that means that now, in this next fight, ESU Warriors are going to have the numbers advantage. Great denial on the flashbang as well. Wizard King got to come up with an early pick on the Halbert, though. That's going to leave a crack in the armor of the ESU Warriors. Another anti-nade comes in, this time from Bapo. Not going to find anything this time around. But look at how close the card is to completion. At the last moment, ESU comes in to try and deny the push. But with no supports online, it's going to be very difficult. But Michael says, no problem, I've got attack visor, and I'm ready to use it. They're going to find several kills with this. We've got the Primal Rage out now. Is this going to be enough to turn the tides in their favor? Halbert's gone. They just have to find Michael, but he's playing keep away right now using this card. It's going to take Tire Man coming in to take out DH Kafka, but Michael is still up and running. And now Disabato's back in the fight. They're going to be able to neutralize that Deadeye as well and take d Nazi out of the fight. Jaeger pops the Death Blossom. This is their last moment, 0 0.01 meters left to go. But a huge amount of kills comes in off the back of a Gravitic Flux, and what a hold from the Warriors. DeSabado with the actual clutch play there. That was some picture-perfect off-tank play from the D.Va. Denies the uh, denies the Deadeye, um, then gets the elimination on it, uh, on the Cassidy as well. Self-destruct for the clean up eliminations on the gravitic flux and that includes denying the tactical visor the dead eye the nano and all of that just from the one character this habit of playing overtime there to perfection pun intended uh and esu warriors that's a first point hold and now midway need a better one to continue the series in any sense if the esu warriors capture they've won out the series here yeah, they have, and you know, uh, I I mentioned before at the, at the uh, at the top of this uh, at the top of this map that first point can be very very difficult to capture, and we've seen that play out I think um, pretty well here for Midway University. Now ESU Warriors, uh, they're looking to come at this with a very similar composition, at least if what is in spawn is to be believed. But there's 30 seconds left to go. Midway, on the other hand, they're looking to take a page out of the ESU Warriors book and have Tire Man on the Roadhog. It's uh, it, something that they, they, they kind of flirted with on the previous maps, right? They they had the Roadhog on uh, on the Blizzard World for, well, it wasn't very long, but it, it did it did come, it, did, it was selected. So we'll see if Tire Man can make a little bit more value of it this time around. Um, and and I, I mean, listen, if they can if they can shut down the, the Farah early, if they can get Michael out of the sky, then definitely potential for Tire Man to perhaps shut down this Abado. Um, and so far, so good. Look how much damage is going into the Farah. Excellent. Wow. Pick up there I love watching that kind of tracking coming out from a soldier player. D Nazi just doing a tremendous job mitigating the entire farmer C threat single handedly. Bapo now able to keep their team alive without too much trouble because that threat is just gone. Disabato going to be almost demeched as well. They barely get out with their uh, mecha still encasing them. Michael back in the fight, though, able to find a pick on Jaeger. That certainly could open things up for the Warriors. Oh, and there it is. Uh, Disabato continuing. Disabato continuing the, the, the reign of terror, uh, this time assisting the Fara to stay alive. And now Midway, uh, bleeding members, uh, losing players. They need to stabilize a little bit. That's a hook, but they can reload. Oh, that is so oh. unfortunate. Yeah, that is that is really too bad right there. Now we've got this card uh, flirting with the golden box of victory. Jaeger, good for one kill onto Michael. That's certainly going to slow things down, especially now that Kafka's out of the fight. But it's going to be, uh, once again, Disabato coming in and helping out tremendously with this pick. Yeah, Disabato just continues to be a real threat here. And uh, Immortality Field used so early. Oh, no. That's going to be all but over. We've got the Gravitic Flux coming in. It's going to lift several members off the ground. And when they return, they're going to be just about taken care of. Moments left. And that's going to be the ESU Warriors taking this match. Excellent stuff there to close it out. Just under pressure. No fear whatsoever. ESU feel like they've been there before. I'm going to see just about to continue. Uh, to the, the, the Reign of Terror, realistically. This is that clutch play. Doesn't capture the Deadeye elimination, unfortunately, but uh, the rest of it, just too clean. And I mean, even with a nano boost, the Winston cannot stay alive. Wizard King, unfortunately, falls. And Midway University will take the L here. ESU, a clean 3-0, and give themselves another win
to go four and one on the season so far. Yeah, excellent play coming out from them. They struggled a little bit on control. Not going to lie. Lee Jong Tower was looking a little bit iffy for them. Warm up and map. Midway Warm put up, up map. That's all you got to say. What's that? <laughs> warm up map. That's all you got to say. Warm up right? map. You're absolutely right, actually. That's a really good point. Yeah, it was a warm up map. It really was. And, uh, you know, the uh, yes, you just uh, once they once they really got their footing, they were they were dominant in this matchup, LeVon. Yeah, I, I mean, I mean, I, I was I was being somewhat joking about that because obviously, <laughs> obviously, Midway played really well. But if you're to ask yes. the players uh, on ESU, why did Lee Jong Tower kind of go that way? I think they would go, you know, definitely a little, bit, a little bit more cavalier with their response. It would be sort of that idea of it takes it takes one to kind of get things in the swing of it, right? But uh, no, yeah. uh, ultimately, ESU all the way through a, a very strong team, understanding what they're really good at too, right? Not forcing uh, styles that don't play to their advantage, instead playing what they're good at, and then. Trying trending towards the victory, even as they got further and further along. And I think um, they got stronger as the series progressed, right? Li Zhang Tower was the closest, Blizzard World, a point was captured, and then we move on to map three and you get the perfect hold there. So clearly ESU, as the series went on, uh, I, I made the joke earlier, you know, I did say it was a warm up, but they played as if it was uh, through the later stages. So impressive stuff from them here as they take the 3-0 victory. Well, LaFond, that's not going to quite do it for us here tonight, even though this game is over. We have another one coming right up on the heels of this. But uh, before we bring you that next matchup, uh, LaFond, any words you would like to leave the audience with? Well, tune back in for map number or match number two. We have exciting stuff coming just around the corner.
Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, friends and family beyond the binary, hello and welcome back to Collegiate Overwatch here at NECC. You're just joining us once again. My name, Warren Jungle Gun Hammond, and joined on the mic by none other than LaFon. Yeah, this is going to be game two of the day here at Jungle Gun as we get set to go underway. Of course, our two teams ahead of us, Alvernia University versus Ithaca College. So uh, definitely exciting stuff here. Obviously, one still hunting for their first victory. Ithaca still looking for that dub, right? They're still hunting there. We got to talk, of course, about how they how they potentially will get a chance to attempt that victory. But we get a look at the map pool as a results on the office, we all do on control Lijong Tower initially, then moving on to Blizzard World for hybrid this week, followed by Gibraltar uh, in map number three. Beyond that, of course, y'all got, if necessary, Hollywood, Ilios, and then uh, unlikely, but possible, a tie break on the final escort map. So uh, that is how our series will unfold before us. How we get there, of course, is it remains to be seen. So uh, as the teams get set to go underway, we shall find out. That we shall, and like you said, we've got Ithaca College looking for their first win here, but Alvernia University, uh, and running in about the middle of the pack, shall we say, yeah. in this uh, in this season, they are sitting at a three and two record right now. So, um, excited to see what both of these teams can do coming in here today. Yeah, uh, and uh, I mean, you know, the the way that Alvernia has kind of got, come across their victories has been certainly a bit of a seesaw. Uh, look, couple of three O's, still mm -hmm. some very close matches with three twos. One going their way, another going to their opposition. So they'll like to, they'll likely try to get that initial lead in the series and close out from there. For Ithaca, you don't want to fall behind too early, right? Getting that first map in your in your wheelhouse, and then that's off your shoulders. So you can start building towards the second one. Again, the only time they have have you know prevented uh or have gone to a map number five was in week three um and and for them you know not being you know if they go behind early then you start to worry about your record um and that comes into the mental game a little bit so for them they'd like to get this first map out of the way uh and try and build from there yeah that they would i uh i'm sure that they're uh hoping they can come out and uh show us exactly what they're made of show us something uh we haven't seen before we're gonna have um both these teams opting for a Brawl composition as we head to Night Market, LaFon, and uh, nothing really out of the ordinary here. Yep, we'll see how well they uh, kind of, uh, you know, meet uh, head to head. I, I will say the one odd oddity here, perhaps, is the fact there's uh, dueling Junkrat. Something we don't see very frequently on Night Market tends to be more mm. on Control Center. But, I mean, with the fact that there's two of them, expect a lot of explosive damage. And obviously, when you're in close, those uh, mines can be quite threatening. Teleporter from one side, so they'll get to the fir uh, point first. Will Alvernia Ithaca walking through the main choke point take a ton of damage as a result? That's going to start to build up Lyle's ultimate, though. The more damage that comes into your team, the quicker you're going to build that up. And already, he's just about doubled what Minus has, uh, what she's been able to pull for Alvernia University. But at the moment, no progress has been made by Alvernia in pushing two point. Ithaca College holding very, very strong right now. But Pit Viper about to get that Deadeye online as well. So we could see something fly here very, very soon. Uh, looking for, you know, looking for the that first uh that first pick off it's actually been a relatively bloodless fight right the fact that the point has ticked over to alvernia still not meaning a whole lot in terms of eliminations you can see Pifto just standing still looking down seeing if anyone's going to walk into the earth shatter fire strike will get them online here's that first rate of ultimates again we haven't had an elimination yet no we haven't this point has uh gone over handily to ithaca with a 20 so percent make it 30 as the picks really start coming in favor of them yeah, Alvernia will get the, the the team fight win, and you know it took up to the thirty percent mark before we got our actual first elimination, uh, and then it was a snowball affair. Ithaca not able to you know uh, brute force through the ant matrix back to it. Some switches coming in for Ithaca as Pit Viper will go over to the Farah unassisted though, so this will allow Confusion a little bit more space to work with to try and take that aerial threat out. Um, Lyle having to work overtime to try and heal the uh, uh, the player in the air. Alvernia comes in with a huge rip tire. Fusion takes out three. And with that, Ithaca going to be sent back to spawn in short order. Yeah, dominant. I mean, listen, rip tire will just get you a win uh, sometimes. Yeah. There it is right there. Is Pit Viper still trying to hunt for that elimination? So, I mean, in, in as much as, you know, the eliminations came late, Ithaca has not gotten one of theirs yet. So uh, it's still looking for that first pickoff. And so far, Alvernia not giving them a ton of room to work with to try and find that elimination. They're going to see if they can push in and kind of brute force this on the back of three powers. 
sound barrier, but a quick environmental kill comes out to Lyle, and that's gonna start the snowball of picks for Alvernia University. 90% on the board. This is Ithaca College's last chance to make it in. They're gonna try and do it off the back of a whole hog, but once again, the environmental kills come in for Diva Devon. Yep, and that's going to be uh, the hold. I don't know that anyone can contest for overtime. Yeah, 100 to 0 there. And really, really initial strong start by Alvernia. I mean, they get to the point first with a teleporter from the Symmetra, and they don't give up percentage at any point as a result. So, really, really dominant performance here by your team in blue. And Alvernia, uh, things going well for them off the rip. That they are. And uh, with the dominant performance on Brawl on Night Market, I'm expecting to see more of the same as we move over to control center uh no swaps coming in for either side in terms of composition at this point uh, nobody planning to make any changes uh wilbo back wilbo wagons pardon me does in fact go over to the tracer so not gonna see these dueling junk rats and uh honestly i feel like junk rat is is a really strong choice here on control center well you'll get your wish as uh pit viper will go over to junk rat late ah. so that's gonna that's gonna be there but i mean again it's that teleport early solos is gonna get to the they're gonna get to the white room first our alvernia and that means that they're gonna set up and the hook doesn't get the elimination early so there's still room even though the, the final blow does come through there's still room for alvernia to get stabilization to get more damage in Ooh, but with Diva Devon going down as well, things are going from bad to worse for uh, Alvernia University. Pit Viper getting in a lot of value with those uh, grenades right now. Wilbo Wagon's looking for an off angle as well. Pit Viper once again layering these uh, grenades in. We're going to see the Immortality Field now used by She's trying to keep her team up for all she's worth. Solilis does come in for a couple of kills, and Ithaca College, despite getting the early advantage, isn't able to transition that into a fight win. And I mean, that's what I mean about getting a better positioning. Even though they lose players, the fact that they're able to hold down Alvernia, that is able to hold down the objective, means that Ithaca is the one that has to walk into them, and then the respawns sort of uh, when they when they bring come back in, they kind of sandwich the players as they try to take the advantage of the point. Now, I mean, Fusion is going to have the Rip Tower and has the advantage of being on the defense. So look out for this in the next fight. Rip tires on both sides. As a matter of fact, it's going to be up to which. Uh... Baptiste, I think, can use their immortality field the best, or which team can neutralize this threat of the Riptire. Neither team content yet to let it loose. Pit Viper does come away with a kill, though, on the solo list, so that's one tool out of the toolbox for Alvernia University. Wilbo Wagon's now trying to get in some off angle, some flank damage as well. Here comes the Rip Tiber from Pit Viper. Is it gonna find value? It does! It snags two on Alvernia University, so with the sound barrier coming in from Bree Power, the College is pushing hard right now. They're trying to finish off these last few kills, and they will be rewarded with some, but Piftil not going to go out quietly. No, but uh, that's still uh, remarkable stuff there from Ithaca as they walk in. And I mean, they're, you know, getting the advantage of finding uh, Alvernia isolated, not finding them playing as a team. And that means that they can't set up for any of the ultimates that they want to use. The photon barrier is used defensively as Solus is walking back from spawn. So not a very, you know, uh, robust attempt. And that means that Alvernia uh, don't have a fight in that last engagement. Now they're trying to re-aggress. This time they'll have, again, that Riptire, again, the Shatter. Keep an eye on the tank, uh, head to, uh, main tank head-to-head -head matchup here as Piftel will have the uh, Earth Shatter and Asonica. They're trying their best to deny the advantage of it. They certainly will be. Uh, she's going to try to be building up her Shatter as well. Another Rip Tire thrown through. This time it's going to be Fusions that lands on the Panasonica. And with that, Alvernia University starting to flip this back in their favor. Confusion coming in for a kill. We've got the Ant Matrix on the high ground as well over on Coast. And with that, Alvernia takes it back. I mean, they just walk in there and Fusion finds uh, a Lyle, I think, isolated and the elimination is swift, right? It's the combo of mine into uh, into the uh, into the first ability, right? The, the, the local mine. So uh, that is a one shot and the, without ma any main healing, they just there's no immortality field to just defend against Riptire and it's a trickle effect from there. So now Alvernia, though, they're getting back capped even as wow. Pitfall lies a big shatter. Absolutely massive. And <laughs> look at the double boob coming out as well on the Piftel. They still get the charge kill. They still get the team kill. And now we are in last fight territory for I Ithaca. Mean, that was just a brilliant shatter, right? Uh, everyone's trying to walk through the choke and it lays down everyone except the player on the objective, uh, which was Wheelbow Wagons. That's going to another pick off. Oh no. This is really rough for uh, 
Ithaca College. They let loose with a rip tire. It does find solo lists, but it's going to be the picks coming in from Alvernia University that are going to continue their dominance. This overtime starting to tick over. Not going to last too long. Lodolo swapping over to the wrecking ball, trying for a last minute contest here, but it's only going to do so much. And this map will go the way of Alvernia. That is a speed run there. Alvernia getting the victory in quick fashion as they complete Lijong Tower. And I mean, just understanding the timing of the of the fight wins. This is just a beautiful shatter, by the way. Piftel coming in clutch with the Reinhardt here. I mean, it, it, oh, that's tragic. Oh, the, sh the shield just drops for a second for Panda Sonica. And uh, yeah, ooh. That's rough, that's tough, but uh, it gives the victory over to Alvernia as they start the 1-0 lead here. As we get set in just a moment for map number two. <laughs> Uh, I'm so sorry. I was muted. <laughs> all, all, all good. All good. Yeah, but we get we get get set to get into map number two here in just a moment. We'll go over to Lizard World for our second uh, our second look, as it's going to be hybrid in play. And I mean, looking perhaps to see a little bit more of that Reinhardt uh, as it's uh, showcased. Yeah, we absolutely will be a uh, very, you know, uh, going to be a very interesting uh, matchup on Blizzard World. Alvernia, though, it came away very, very uh, dominant mm -hmm. on on control. So I'm. Uh, yeah, I'm anticipating to, that we're going to see more of the same as we move on to Blizzard World, but I'm ready to be surprised. Yeah, and I mean, surprises are, are always nice, and we've been surprised a little bit, right? The Junkrat was uh, a look that mm -hmm. we didn't expect. Uh, it's not something that's quite common on Night Market, but it got showcased nonetheless. And so, um, yeah, having having new looks is not as it would not be, I think, uh, uh, outwardly unwelcome. Uh, definitely looking forward to seeing how that kind of evolves, though, because uh, for for uh, uh, for Alvernia's side, um, realistically, they were able to walk to the objective and kind of just take control of it um, rather unharmed. And I think for Ithaca, they need to be a little bit quicker on punishing those aggressive rotates, those um, the, that that positioning from from uh, Alvernia. Uh, you know, don't give it to them. Don't give them that ground for free. And that now we could be in a different story. So we'll see how well they're able to adapt as uh, we move forward. Yeah, you're absolutely right. You know, when when we move on to Blizzard World, there's such long sidelines and there's such a long trip to that first point, right? Yeah. That there's ample opportunity for you to start to bleed out some of these abilities from your opposition, right? And so if you can do that, if you can, you know, make them expend all of their utility before they get to point, then your defense can, it, it can come up with a very, very large advantage. So that's what I'm going to be looking at both of these teams to do as we start to load in. It's a shame that none of these, uh, te neither of these teams have a uh, have a shark as their uh, as their mascot because <laughs> right? might get a uh, might get an advantage. Oh, I guess in this case it's more like they're 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 hunting the shark. Maybe uh, maybe that doesn't work out so well. Actually, yeah, I don't know, I don't know. Maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe we're talking about there's no sharks uh, as mascots, but no, that's going to be now. They can call <laughs> the defense first, so they'll they'll swap sides here, um, and. A halt hook combo, right? So they're putting the shield into the roadhog a little bit more. Um, now, there's two ways to play this composition. One is that the Orisa is an island and uh, just sort of uh, plays a mainstay and is sort of the focus, while the Roadhog plays a bruiser and kind of flanks. Um, the fact that Ithaca College is playing uh, a lot of uh, long sightline characters, namely the Ash and the Torbjorn, leads me to believe that it's actually going to be the secondary style, which is going to be the uh, Roadhog playing in tandem with the Orisa, trying to play off the halt and going for the hooks there, which, uh, I mean... It's probably a smarter choice considering Alvernia will be playing that rush composition, will be playing as a unit and, uh, you know, sort of standing still and, uh, you know, calling, hey, come to us is the right choice here. We're going to see Alvernia take a uh, low approach to the point. And uh, this is this is a great approach because it eliminates a lot of that poke damage that you're going to take from, you know, your opposing side. And especially considering that, you know, this is the kind of composition they're running. They're running a poke composition. So, um Gonna be uh, interesting to see if they're able to get away with it. Lodolo going down early though, that uh, take a breather, not gonna be able to keep them up as long as they had hoped. And now Alvernia with an ample opportunity to start to push this point. Rotation comes in a little bit late from Panasonica and she's caught out. 
And with that, Alverdia University got to be able to take this first point. Yeah, there's only so many stuns that the uh, the uh, that uh, you can handle. I mean, the Take a Breather perhaps leaves their one, but then the Freeze comes in uh, from from Fusion, so that's that's no bueno. And then Ithaca College, I mean, Panasonic uh, meets at the uh, consistently right dodges the flashbang um and then continues forward oh big shatter here absolutely massive gonna lay down both tanks gonna charge through several members wilbo wagons does get the kill but the opportunity has been made and the rest of alverdia is taking it <laughs> sometimes there's moments that like uh, uh hang in the like they hang in the air sort of in in, in frozen time right mm -hmm. um and that shatter was one of them pifto was like of course <laughs> yeah. i'm gonna shatter here so that's yeah. uh, that's a fight one, and you can see them resetting back on the objective as the cart continues forward. And Ithaca, they make a switch. Pit Viper goes over to the Widow in the uh, halfway through the last engagement. It's going to be up to fifty percent on the, um, you know, the infra site. But uh, the tough part is you need to get a clean kill like that. Minus goes down, and now uh, without the main healing, Alvernia are a bit of a stickier situation simply because they don't have that survivability they need to take the brawl in close. Yeah, that's going to make things very, very difficult for them. They're likely going to have to back up. Pit Viper, good for another as well. But the counter pick does come in courtesy of Piffle. We're going to see uh, Pit Viper getting very close now to that infra site. Self-destruct thrown in. It will find one. Alverdia University coming up with some big kills right here. They go for the res as well. But I believe that Free Power going to pay for their life for that. And the cart is just about ready to capture here. Just a few more scraps for Alverdia to clean up. That is a very fast second point take. Barely a hold here. Ithaca now will have to contend with third as their mainstay. Um, Force to retreat quite aggressively, and they're not done yet. Panasonic eliminated, so this has gone uh, a little bit more aggressive now for Alvernia, recognizing that the respawns from Ithaca are harried and, uh, you know, in disarray. Not giving them any opportunity to reset is a smart play. Solalist also going over to the Widow to dual pit vipers, so um, Ithaca in a ton of hurt. Yeah, they really, really are right now. Um, but they've got plenty of ultimates to try and stabilize with. They're going to see the nano boost applied to the little uh, with the whole hog. They're going to be able to do a tremendous amount of damage with that. Lucio almost loses their footing. They will go down to an anti-nade, um, though. And with that, Ithaca College will mount their first successful defense here on Blizzard World. And not a moment too Ooh, soon. But oh. Lodolo... Lodolo might have been off more than he could chew right there. We are going to see Pit Viper coming with a pick onto Fusion. But with the Blizzard and Self-Destruct coming in, Alvernia got to come out on top once again. I suppose one could describe that as expensive, but Ithaca College also committed uh, a ton of resources. So it's just the Supercharger and the, and the Valkyrie that's going to be in tow for this next fight as Solos goes over to the Hanzo. So even more shield break. And I have to say, this Zarya... Um, the problem with the Zarya is that with the Orisa, it's a little bit of anti-synergy, so we'll see how well yeah. they're able to make it out um, as they try and build charge here. Yeah, that's going to be very difficult because, of course, Panda Sonica, she's going to want to stay far away from the action, whereas Lodolo needs to get into it for there to be power. But it's going to be quickly mitigated as Alvernia just sweeps away the competition right here and will complete a full cap on blizzard world 346 on the time bank too so really remarkable stuff here from alvernia as they run through the map and i mean now ithaca has to set up on their offense and try uh, uh try to um try to get value in this next one right this is this is they, they just have to uh, sometimes it's as simple as in moments like these right with 346 on the advantage you need to capture the third point and you need to capture with time remaining um, right. Ideally more than a minute. Uh, and then really that there's, you know, there's no easy way to put this. That's a really tough ask. Yeah, it, it certainly is. This is going to be uh, a Herculean effort for Ithaca College, uh, you know, especially considering how strong Alvernia has looked so far. Um, and Alvernia opting uh, for a very standard brawl composition on the defensive side here. So, um i mean it makes sense yeah the, the it does reason, the reason why it makes sense is and, and is because for them uh for alvernia this composition excels at taking fights and when you take fights you reduce the time bank 
um, the more fights you take, the more quickly the time bank is um, is difficult. Because the parts of the fight include staging, um, the setup. Uh, so staging meaning that you kind of place yourself on the map before you meet that head to head, and then the the fight itself initiates, and then you have the post fight you know ramp down. When you take a lot of fights, those first and third options are, are, you know, there's not many ways to kind of remove them. Um, so they take time. And so you you just take more time away. Because they have such a large time bank, that time uh, mitigation is immense for them. And they're playing the long game here. So I really like this composition from them. Yeah, this is going to make things difficult for Ithaca College. We're going to see an early pick come in in favor, though, of Ithaca. Spitfire able to find fusion on a flank. Now, Panda's not going to start to push her team forward a bit. Uh, we're going to see the rotation come around to the left side of point. It's going to give Alvernia an opportunity now to drop down and meet them on the other side, which is exactly what we're seeing. But it's going to be Piftal taken out by the Rocket Hammer of Panda Sonica. She is swinging for the, uh, for the wall right there. And with that, Ithaca College quickly deals with Alvernia. Still not done though. The point's being contested, and I mean that hack onto Piftel's big, but they need to make sure these eliminations come quick. Again, time is not an Ithaca side. No, it is not. And now we've got a uh, solo list with attack visor in the high ground. They've already got a pick onto Wilbo Baggins. Can they turn this into more? We will see Bree Power find a uh, boop kill onto Piftel, but the fight now swinging back in favor of Avernia. We've got the coalescence committed, but it's not going to result in any kills. Trying desperately to keep their team up. Can Pit Viper get back with the EMP in time to swing this fight? We've got a very high charge Ladola, but with them out of the fight as well, this has gone from bad to worse for Ithaca, and the hold is successful for Alvernia. Literally 99.9% .9 on the capture point. Wow. 1% away. And uh, honestly, shout out to Sololess for trusting the supports enough to be like i going to contest that is i mean it's the right play it's the right play but it's tough to put yourself in a dangerous situation like that and not feel a little bit of worry now alvernia that's half the time bank eradicated just gone um and ithaca still has to try and capture that first pay, uh, objective sure they should be able to do it with the emp here but they have 99.9 percent .9%. that may just come back to haunt them it certainly could. We're going to see Will Bo Baggins teleport right underneath Alvernia University. That's going to allow him to get in position for this EMP and um, potential uh, push. But it looks like they're going to opt for maybe something different. I thought we were going to see an EMP and Will Bo Baggins come in for the back line right there. But it appears that maybe there's a different plan on the books. Alvernia now taking things very, very aggressive. And oh my gosh, the back cap almost comes in. That's what they were playing for. Very, very close, but Alverni in the meantime has taken out Panda Sonica. So with her gone and out of the fight, Ithaca now in a very difficult position. I wonder if maybe they shouldn't have gone for the play instead of the back cap. Uh, I think that back cap was more of an emergency thing because they had lost two mm. players early. It's not, it, you don't intentionally go for that, but I mean, now down to the last minute and that tactical advisor is going to find one or the sound barrier as well. This is, this is not ideal here for Alvernia. Wow, a six man shatter from Panda Sonica though. Can she? Turn this around, huge opportunity made, but nobody there from Ithaca to follow up means it all is for naught. And four seconds left. Um, I've Pit Viper uses the EMP as well. Um, just, but there's, there, again, the fall, you just can't, Alvernia is the one that has, you know, resources running. The EMP does not shut down the visor, right? So that's, that's a little unfortunate. Piftel again has an earth shatter. Uh, and I mean, Ithaca College, they need to win this fight and they need to win it cleanly. Um, 20 seconds, 25 seconds left here for them. Looking for that big hero play. They're going to start to push to point. This Graviton Surge and Death Blossom has to be massive. We see a shatter come from the top ropes. It is going to land. Wilbo Wagons with a pick. Here comes the Graviton Surge. It's going to find a couple of victims. Can they turn this into their favor? Once again, Sololus coming in big, but the Coalescence from Lyle may in fact get the job done. Can Sololus come away with a hero play? Not this time. And Ithaca captures the first point. Still, very, very difficult stuff for uh, Ithaca College. And uh, no, I mean, not to put, to put too fine a point on it, they're not done yet. The work is just getting started. 2.15 left. And I mean, you're haunted by that three point capture with 3.46 for Alvernia, right? So this street yeah. space is going to be very, very clean. And it has started off to be very much the opposite. Yeah, it certainly has. Pit Viper going down early. Uh, that opens up a lot of opportunity for Alvernia. They don't have to worry about these side lanes. They can push in a lot more aggressively. Eva Devon has the 
um, Valkyrie ready to go in case of the Kakalich starts to push forward again, but they don't really have any ultimates to work with right now, whereas Alvernia has three. Maywall does come out from Fusion to try and section off um, Piftle, but it's going to be Panasonica who falls. And with that, Alvernia is going to have a nice hold right here at the Arches yeah, on work, second. Minus working overtime here with the healing, something you'd love to see as she comes in for the team. Now, Alvernia, I mean, Alvernia University, have the choke point, have the blizzard, have the... Ch what don't they have is a better question. The answer is nothing, in including the eliminations, and they dodge Bright Power's attempt at the uh, environmental. So, Alvernia eating well, as it were. And that's going to be now a minute left on the clock here to try and just salvage anything from this map for Ithaca. Look at this. Both of these teams now. Okay, so Alvernia already has their six ults online, but Ithaca College is getting theirs as well. This could be an absolute explosion of ultimates during this next fight because uh like you said we are rapidly approaching last fight territory there might only be one serious one left we're gonna see the death blossom not land anything the shatter is big though from pandasonica once again pit viper falls up with a couple of kills self-destruct comes in from alvernia but it's gonna be too little too late and with 30 seconds left to go this cart gets moving once again for ithaca <laughs> Pit Viper, there it is. Good, excellent work. That's gonna delay it. I don't. They're gonna go for the resurrect. Obviously, they have to um, in in this final fight for Alvernia. And why yeah. not, right? Every fight they take is another chance at winning. Um, they're actually not going for the res. They're just uh. electing to wait for the uh, for the overtime. I don't hate this. Um, again, Ithaca only has the one ultimate to work with now, right? They only have the graviton search, and it's gonna need to be massive. Oh my gosh, and that is a great way to start things out because Minus had the amplification matrix. That could have, uh, that could absolutely have been a win condition for Alvernia. Overtime is here. Here comes the Graviton Surge. He catches a couple, and with that, the picks do come in for Ithaca. Piftel gonna try and stall things out, but with confusion out of the mech, Ithaca College will get through Street's phase of Blizzard World. A minute and a half left, though, um, and... Oh, man, it's tough when a team captures a second point, uh, I mean, it's great that Ithaca has come online at the end. A, a lot off the back of Pit Viper, you know, getting those eliminations, those stagger plays, so Alvernia can't take a true 6v6. Um, one team out here playing Overwatch 2, the other still playing the game we're on. Uh, and that's that's a good thing for, for Ithaca, but I mean, now down to a last minute, and they need to capture a time remaining. And it looks like they're not going to be able to do it. No, this is going to be a very, very tough thing for them to do, especially considering both DPS are out of the fight. 50 seconds left to go. Ithaca College needs to reset very quickly. Otherwise, this could be absolutely terrible for them. And, uh, I mean, now you're playing for the overtime capture, right? The cart does not move fast enough to get there. Uh, even three stack with no no contest. Um, yeah. So, I mean, Ithaca is playing for the draw at this point. Um, it's still, I mean, it's still a better than a loss. No doubt about it. We're going to see some switches coming in as Pit Viper will go over to the Genji here. So both Shimada brothers in play. We'll see which one comes out on top. Lore says it's Hanzo. We'll see if that changes here. Alvernia University sitting on two ultimates right now. Panda Sonica just about to get this Earth Shatter. Can she survive long enough? It's not going to be the case as the Ant Matrix does a tremendous amount of damage. Alvernia University going to be able to take this one on Blizzard World from Ithaca College. And oh no, the lore has come true yet again. So we'll <laughs> shut down Pit Viper. <laughs> And the Hanzo walks away with the victory again as Alvernia takes that 2-0 lead. I mean, Jungle God, that was just a strong showing from Alvernia on their offense, and they never looked back. No, they didn't. Uh, they absolutely, uh, they steamrolled through their attack phase. And, you know, I, uh, this actually reminds me of, um, you know, what one thing that we did see, which was that... Um, you know, the rotation just didn't quite come through quick enough right there. I think, and that might have been the case a lot of times, you know, for this Ithaca College squad, right? They they didn't recognize that the threat was imminent, and so they left themselves in a very precarious situation, and Piftel just took advantage of it. And I think that's what happened over and over again. But I do want to say that Panda Sonica, she has impressed me tremendously on the Reinhardt. She has hit some fat shatters. Um, not every time has uh, her team been able to follow up on them, but they've been impactful. Yeah, I, I mean, for sure, right? But uh, the the thing to highlight, of course, is not that it, the, the 
main tank head to head is oftentimes not dictated solely by the skill of the main tank. It's all the you know the factors around them. How well is your team supporting you? How well are you getting the resources you need? Like the speed boost. One thing that uh, Alvernia had um, in that first engagement was the fact that Piftel has Piftel has the uh, the uh, amp speed right the the uh, um, that speed aura to to back them up. And for for Pandasonica, they're you know in, in certain cases playing with an uh, an on and a bap and you know maybe sometimes that'll work um but sometimes that's not going to find value and even when the lucia was in play um in that case you need the support of the rest of your team as well so it's it's a team game out there and it, one player's uh, uh impact is oftentimes only exacerbated by the remaining uh players being able to follow up yeah, you're absolutely right. You know, uh, you look at a lot of other first person shooters, uh, you know, Valorant comes to mind, um, you know, uh, CSGO, things like that. Uh, the individual can swing the nature of a fight relatively um, or, or on their own, right? Whereas in Overwatch, it, it really does take a lot of synergy, a lot of working together to accomplish what you need to do. And when that synergy and when that teamwork isn't there, um, we see the results of it in the scoreline. Yeah, I mean, we'll have to wait to see if uh, Ithaca College can uh, can can recover to give themselves a chance back in this series as they're down 0-2 so far uh, against Alvernia University. We're going to throw it to a quick break, though, before we see what's going to happen in this third and potentially final map as we are going to be headed to the high grounds of Gibraltar. Stick around. We will be back in just a minute.
Welcome back, everybody. I uh, hope you had enough time to grab some water, do what you needed to do, uh, because we are ready to head back into this matchup. 2-0 to zero the score line here, and uh, Lafon, we are headed to Gibraltar next. Yeah, uh, obviously we have a set map pool here at NECC, so there will be, you know, per week, uh, the showcasing of uh, of different maps. Obviously this week is Gibraltar for our escort, and I'm interested to see how well the adaptation comes through, because we haven't seen a whole lot of it, I think, from, from Alvernia. Uh, that's a, that's a harsh way to put it. Uh, we haven't needed to see any flexibility from Alverdia, so that's that, that's probably fair. Um, but there is yeah. a lot more high ground on Gibraltar, right? Uh, you can still play the Reinhardt. That's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just that it's a lot more difficult to make work. And so we'll have to see if that adaptation comes through here. Yeah, we will. Uh, Ithaca College is looking a little rough right now, but uh, you know what? Uh, Ithaca, I don't know if you're familiar with it, uh, Lafon. I've had the I've had the opportunity to visit there uh, several times, and it's a uh, there's a lot of high ground in Ithaca, shall we oh. say? It's a it's a lot of it's a lot of uh, cliffs and gorges and hills and things like that. So you know maybe uh maybe some familiarity with the landscape will uh, do Ithaca College some good. Maybe that'll help them bring it back here and uh, see if they can't get a reverse sweep on the board. Still looking for this first win. Uh, let's see if that's going to be in the cards today. Yeah, and I mean, they're, they're, we said at the top of the show that they need to, uh, ideally, they'd like to prevent themselves from getting behind early um, uh, in, in, in that regard, but that didn't come through. So now the best, I mean, the best time for a victory is at the start. Uh, the next best time of the victory is when you don't have any choices left. So we'll <laughs> see if they're able to, uh, uh, if they're able to bring this one back, claw it from the brink as it were. For Alvernia, it's, you know, game tapes stay the same. Don't, or the game plan hasn't changed at all. There's no point in, uh, um, you know, I, I think something that's really interesting of Alvernia is how aggressively they've played so far. They haven't really taken, mm. um, you know, the defensive side of things, uh, haven't really respected the space of the defense, and I don't think they should, um, especially with how, you know, reactive uh, Ithaca has, or, or the lack thereof, Ithaca has had to that aggression. Um, so, yeah, uh, impressive stuff from Alvernia to to lead off the series. You're absolutely right. Now, I, I think uh, aggressive is a great way to describe those as well. You know, my mind uh, goes back to, the one push that we saw from Ithaca College where it, it looked like maybe we were going to see an EMP with a Reaper come into the back line on the high ground yeah. where um, where the uh, the other team was holding. But no, they opted instead. Well, the um, uh, we saw that team drop down and push into Ithaca College while the uh, while the Sombra tried to back cap. And, and that, to me, I think is a perfect example of this kind of aggression that we've seen come out today i mean to that point of that play i really liked what alvernia was doing you know head on a swivel don't let that they didn't let that play go through for free uh you know even with the back attempt um right. the off tank was right there for for the support so uh alvernia not only are being aggressive they're tempering that aggression with intelligence and that's something you need to do to be able to su succeed at uh, consistent levels in overwatch and something that i'm pleased to see uh so far uh of course now now you know that could go away in an, an instant in this next map. I don't think it will, but you know the the, the potential still exists for that to be the case. Yeah, it certainly does. Um, Alvernia definitely going to be looking to stop uh, Ithaca College in their tracks right now on Watchpoint Gibraltar. And I mean, uh, you know, in the last game that we saw, we saw a first point hold, and it, you know the defense here can be so powerful. Yeah, um, and I mean, <sighs> we saw in our previous series this uh, today, the first series of the night, that that was in case what that was the fact that occurred there, right? It was a first point hold off some clutch play. So, uh, you know, does that repeat itself here? Um, we'll have right. to find out. I, I will say, of course, how we got here has been sort of a, a case study in and of itself because map number one was not particularly close. Um, obviously, the 100 to zero on Li Zhang Tower on Night Market, it was, you know, a case of teleport to the objective first for Alvernia, and they kind of just stabilized and, uh, you know, held there. Round number two was a little bit closer, not much but a little bit um and uh in in so much as that was the case it's been improvement from ithaca ever since um they got to the third stage on blizzard world and yes their defense wasn't particularly successful on the first time around but they brought it back in 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 their offensive round i'm curious to see if that um improvement continues into watch by gibraltar so if they can slow down the game enough for that first point um you know to take that advantage there then maybe there is a chance for them to bring this one back yeah, there certainly could be. If uh, they can pull that off, I, I could see their chances improving greatly yeah. um, at taking Alvernia. But Alvernia definitely going to be uh, the favorite going into this map. Now, uh, let me take a quick peek here and see if sides have been chosen just now. 
All right, Ithaca will be on attack first this time. So we're going to get to see if, uh, you know, where they're going to set the goal line, right, for Alvernia. They're going to hope to set it as far as they can, hopefully at the end of the map, um, if you are an Ithaca College fan. Yeah, and I mean, that's the uh, that's sort of the, the chance to see. Does that come true? And uh, I mean, the one thing to highlight, though, is that when you're attacking first, if your attacking side doesn't go well, how well do you recover on the defense, right? How well can you rebound from that? And so Ithaca will have a chance to set the pace, but that could just as easily backfire. We'll see if they're able to recover here in map number three as we start off on Gibraltar. The Overwatch flag waving in the breeze. Yeah, you know, it's uh, not too much longer that we're going to see that Overwatch flag without a little tune next to it, LaFon. I, uh, Love the fact that we've gotten some news here recently about the uh, about the the new game. I uh, I for one can't wait to see it. I know that uh, every actually I'm sure everybody here can't wait to see that game when it comes out. But to start things out, we're gonna have Alverni on the defense, and they are opting for dive, which I love. Yeah, um, I, man, this is an interesting composition. Um, I would expect Solas to get most of the pocket from Diva Devon here. Um, while it's another four player squad setup. So it's like, usually you see an Ash instead of the soldier, but obviously the soldier has a lot more mobility, um, can uh, has a little bit more survivability if they're caught out. And obviously the Helix Rocket, the burst damage is quite high. So we'll see how well this turns out. But this this composition, in as much as it's a dive, is built for Brawl. They're you know built to get up close and kind of hammer it out. And we can see right there, um, as a result, look at how close in the bridge they're playing. And, and this is smart, I think, right. from them. Yeah, I think it absolutely is. You know, uh, typically you're going to see if the attackers opt for a dive composition, you're going to see them come out um, and uh, contest that bridge. But that's not going to be the case here. We're going to see the brawl. Uh, we're going to do a little conga line um, up to this high ground. They're going to look to take this bridge away from them. Uh, but they're going to do it a little bit uh, slower. The TP is going to come in. Um, it's not going to include Reinhardt. And with that, Alvernia University just makes quick work of Ithaca. So, I mean, the reason the Reinhardt isn't with them is because the Reinhardt's the one that moves the cart um, in, in this composition. Uh, unfortunately for Ithaca, they, Alvernia is ready for it. So uh, it, it, they uh, they hold up in the, uh, in the side. Don't get baited by the rotation and come and clean up. Really good stuff. We're going to see Pit Viper switch over to the Widow, and, uh, I mean, Alvernia hasn't been forced to give up that high ground, so they're just going to continue to put as much damage as they can. Solo is able to get a kill, but Pit Viper does strike back. It's going to be a 4v4 now on point, and uh, Pit Viper, I think, has been a, uh, you know, has been a standout player so far for Ithaca College. On the, on the Widow, they've really been able to get a lot of value. Alvernia, though, going to be able to continue to put this aggressive, um, push into Ithaca College as the shield of Pandasonica goes down, so does she. Um, we're going to see an exit pick, pick from Wilbo Wagons, and with the respawns in Ithaca's advantage, that could be a boon. I mean, it's certainly, oh, well, it, it could be. Um, it's not going to be, but it, it certainly is not a bad thing. Uh, in this sense, right. because Solus gets the elimination to Bright Power, uh, you know, the reset has to come in. You can see the, the relative... Uh, uh, passiveness from the offense here as they're waiting for their remaining members to come in. The big problem, of course, is the high ground control is here for Alvernia. Look at that by Pixel. Both tank ultimates are available or will nearly be so. Here's the tactical advisor as well. And no defensive utility for Ithaca to deny it. Minus will go down and uh, without her in the lineup, Alvernia going to be a little bit worse for where Diva Devon going down low as well. Fusion does find a pick onto Lodolo. Now Piftel with the Primal Rage to try and slow things down. Once again, Panasonica going to be uh, pounded into oblivion. Fusion connects for another. Um, and with that, Alvernia is going to hold once again. Yeah, really good stuff. Um, Alvernia, don't overcommit to the payload. The payload does move, yes, but it's, you know, Ithaca is unfortunately trying to take the fight on the objective, and Alvernia says, okay, um, we'll just continue to control the high ground. The payload is now even worse place off for the offense because you have to walk through the choke point and take, look how much damage you have to take just to enter, um, you know, down to it. Uh, as uh, Wilbo Wagons gets the high ground, tries to take a fight, but Piftel's there to deny it. And uh, now Alvernia just... It's 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 a it's it's a firing range from on high, uh, and Solus is the be main benefactor. Yeah, this is a this has just been a tremendous defense coming out from Alvernia. They've got five ultimates coming online as well. Lyle does have this nano boost. Pit Viper has the tac visor, so these both have to be big. But oh, with Lodolo going down early, 
things are not looking great for Ithaca. They are down to last fight territory. They have to back up and reset post haste. And Piftel is trying to make sure that doesn't happen. Uh, and with the double pocket from both supports, it's looking better and better for them. Hold them in spawn, force the reset, um, and, and, and kind of come through. Tactical Visor here, not going to find line of sight as uh, Alvernia retreat. Yeah, Lyle going to be taken out by a Death Blossom from Fusion. 30 seconds left to go. And with very little left on the board for Ithaca College, this is looking rough. Alvernia with a tremendous hold here. Let's see how Ithaca College tries to touch here and continue this push. Pit Viper onto the Doomfist, just trying to get to the objective, but yeah, taken oh, away. No. Four seconds left. It's harried, it's staggered, it's rough. And the Tactical Visor will say no thank you as Alvernia will complete their hold here. And over time, will trickle away for now the offensive end. And Ithaca College looking to play defense ideally better to see if they can salvage a win here in Gibraltar. This is going to be very, very tough, though. The cart only made it as far as Car Wash, uh, the colloquially, colloquially known as Car Wash, that area right underneath the bridge. Uh, the low, lowest point on Watchpoint Gibraltar, as a matter of fact. So, and actually, another fun fact about that, the reason it's called Car Wash, um, mm -hmm. there's two, okay, so two fun facts about Gibraltar. First, one, way back, um, that actually used to be a checkpoint. Um, really? Yes, that used to be a checkpoint. Because was of, that like beta or alpha or something? No, it was in the, the, the main game. They removed it eventually, but yeah, way, way, huh. way back at Overwatch. It used to be a checkpoint. Um, and they used to have Symmetra turrets. Uh, back when Symmetra had six turrets, um, would set up right. in there, and that's why it was a car wash. So two little fun facts for you. That's um, wild. Yeah, defensively, people didn't defend this first part of Gibraltar. They'd let the checkpoint go through, uh, like they'd let the first checkpoint right. go through. Um, and then they'd I actually do remember that, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, um, I mean, just past that, it, listen, days of yore, this is this is where the car right? needs to be defended. So we'll see yeah. how Ithaca College can resolve this because uh, it's looking rough. They've got the right, they've got a cheese composition for it. And um, hopefully they're able to put enough damage through with the Bastion, with the Junkrat to get some value with the double shield, stabilize long enough, but uh, definitely have their work cut out for them. Yeah, they absolutely do so much damage, though, in this composition. I mean, the damage boost, the amplification matrix, Pit Viper with the grenades as well. The Al Alverni University going to have a hard time getting into position to stage a dive. Uh, Pit Viper going to be controlling this high ground very well. Wilbo Wagons goes down low. Immortality Field already has to be used by Free Power, but Piftel will take a trip back to spawn unwillingly, courtesy of the Omnic Bastion. Resurrect there from Piftel, though, and mm. look how many resources are committed, which means that the dive's going to come in and Lyle down now, Ithaca slowly falling apart. Oh my gosh, Confusion able to take Wilbo Wagons out of the fight, Panasonica down as well, and without their main tank, things are going to be very, very tough for Ithaca College. Alvernia University on the brink of winning this map and this series. They don't have far to go, and it's a long time from spawn to this point, and Panasonica committed to this Orisa. Can she get there in time? Uh, they will not. The cart will roll in. Minus the only one escorting it, and that will be the game. Alvernia takes the victory here. 3-0. Dominant advantage on Gibraltar as they complete the run through and uh, looking looking really good here. Yeah, Alvernia uh, played absolutely dominant today. I mean, uh, you know, we, we see first point holds on watch point Gibraltar, but I feel like it's rare that we see one so far forward. Just Phenomenal defensive play coming out from them. Phenomenal aggressive play coming out from just a great showing from start to finish from Alvernia. Yeah, excellent stuff. And uh, they will, as a result, take the victory here. And I mean, to highlight Ithaca College, right? They had moments of, of excellence. They had moments of uh, team cohesion and team play. Uh, unfortunately, they couldn't string it all together to shut down their opposition. Uh, and, I, you know, still looking for that first victory. But I think they have the building blocks here as a team. And so I'm looking forward to see if they can string them together, put them together, um, you know, to, to have that come in in the future. For the moment, though, they'll have to be content with the moments they had as Alvernia again walks away with a 3-0. That they do, and that is going to do it for us tonight here, Lafada. There's more Overwatch coming your way from NECC, but we're going to be handing off the reins to another pair of casters. So... Pleasure working with you, as always, Lafon. And before we close, once again, any final words? Well, I mean, stay tuned. Uh, more action comes right after this.
All right, welcome chat match three of the NECC gauntlet tonight for Overwatch. I'm all charged, joined by Chase Nuclear Nukem. And Nuke, we got a banger on our hands. Maybe the most electric game we're going to cast all regular season. It's Northwood versus Bay State. These two teams undefeated in the Legends division. What can chat expect tonight, Nuke? <clears throat> chat can expect nothing short of natural disasters happening all around the board there's gonna be earth shatters right there's gonna be dragon strikes there's gonna be pulse bombs there's gonna be shaking like you've never seen before in fact i would even put money down that your computer screen just starts wobbling off the desk because th this action that's coming up tonight is unprecedented uh, it it's nothing that we've seen before this season in this division in the necc yeah, really only once or twice a semester you get this kind of matchup at the highest level where you're just going to be treated with a best of five of nonstop, well-executed Overwatch. These are some of the best programs in the country, and they recently just had a two-to-one bout go the way of Bay State in the Activision Blizzard Collegiate League. So these two teams are trying to duke it out. The reason that Northwood gives for losing that game two-to-one is Landon playing on a laptop, so... Bay State is trying to silence all <laughs> doubters this time and beating him on a 3K PC build. We'll see how it plays out, but Nuke, where are we going next here? Man, I tell you, we're, I think we're going to go to the lineups first, take a look at what these colleges have to bring to the table. First of all, we are going to take it over to Northwood University. We got Burger Bandit, Landon, Seasons, Dynasty, Yamitra, and Boat on the roster of Northwood. Now tell me, what are we expecting to see from Bay State? Well, Bay State, the star-studded lineup of Neb, Iwami, Faded, Cabe, Abs, and Depresso. You gotta keep your eye in this game on Neb and Landed. Both of the supports on these teams are pretty much their captain shot callers, and they do a ton of damage too. Their mechanics are on point. I remember in the playoffs last semester, um, Landon was our player of the game in a game that you and I casted. And again, yep. in a tournament over the summer that I had the pleasure of casting the Will English Invitational. Um, uh -huh. That was like a semi-pro tournament that Northwood showed up to and decided that they would run the table and get all the way into the finals. So this team right. just competes as much as they possibly can. Both of them really do, but there was almost no time off for these teams. And Nuke, as we get into the maps, Lijiang Tower is going to be our stage for map number one as we go into control and then on to hybrid we've got good old blizzard world escort watch point gibraltar hybrid again hollywood back to control for map five is going to be ilios and then the tiebreaker if need be is junker town and there is a fair chance because these undefeated teams just had a 2-1 like i said they play very close overwatch and if they treat us to a map six i mean everyone must just be smiling ear to ear because this is going to be so fun to watch Oh, absolutely. And I actually have the pleasure this weekend of seeing Bay State compete in New York at the Hudson Valley GamerCon. So that's going to be very exciting and a cool point of uh, a conversation point, if you will, for me to bring up with them. And uh, this match, I, man, I love that first things first, we're getting into Li Zhang Tower. This is an awesome map. I think that it's perfect for control, obviously. And it's uh, it, one of the better control maps. There's a lot of uh, variety in what you can do on Li Zhang Tower. All the points are uh, you know, different in how you approach them. But we're taking a look at the lineups. Uh, looks like characters are coming out in base state. Looks like they're going to be running the Zarya Diva. Ah, 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 I was going to say, mind. no way. <laughs> <laughs> That's no what I was chance. thinking. I was like, this wow. Lead? No way. Not that quite near comp snoop, but Pretty close here, both of them playing Brawl with the Lucio Speed Boost and Reinhardt. But we're about to be underway here. Dynasty, the Doomfist player for this Northwood Esports squad. Going in with that first initial rocket punch, trying to make some space. Doesn't find the Elim. Landon actually has to pop down that Immortality Fuel to save him. And just like that, Northwood come away with the first kill of the night. d and Kiwami and shortly following with a takedown on the Faded and Depresso. They stay starting to crumble early in this one, but Northwood just out to that early start despite Getting to the point second, they will take that first fight dub. 
Well, I mean, base state, you have to find the value with Depresso on Symmetra. And while they did get the teleport in, unfortunately, Northwood beat them there. They got the Lucio boost a little bit faster and beat them to the punch. So Depresso immediately making that switch over to Cole Cassidy might change the dynamics of these fights. We're seeing a stun come out between Faded and Seasons on point. We're going to see some... <laughs> Uh, Fire Strike actually get thrown out. It's going to take out Neb on the side of Bay State. Northwood keeping this aggression up. Tell me, what do you think Bay State needs to do coming back from this? What, what do they need to throw out? Well, they choose to invest right there pretty early in the next fight. Didn't have all their members back. That could have been a miscommunication there to commit that amplification matrix. So going through this game, I'm sure we're going to see them tighten up how they use that alt economy. I think that was a pretty aggressive investment, but there's still a lot of this first round to chew away at. And I'm sure they're still sitting pretty in this spot because Cave almost has that rip tire depresso coming online with the high noon right now. And they've got the opening pick here Ooh. on the dynasty. So I'm looking for Neb to just speed boost this team and get some focus fire called Cave is going to pop this rip tire, and right now Northwood has to play a bit scared as he stalls it out. But Northwood, they drop the sound barrier, they're amping up the aggression, and they're investing of their own. Burger Bandit sends in that self destruct, doesn't find anything. Neb collapses onto both there. Seasons also falls in the front line, but Dynasty, in the meantime, has found two picks on his own, trying to swing this one back for Northwood Esports, and he might have done it. They've still got three in this fight, Ooh. but Depresso able to take down Yamitra up on that high ground in the center of point. And Bay State, they don't want to say die in this fight just yet, but Dynasty's got some other plans as he closes in on his fourth and wow. fifth kill of the fight. That was so close. I mean, look at that bar. Bay State needed a fraction of a second to take that point but northwood keeping them off and holding it to 90 percent not allowing bay state to get control at all might be all she wrote for map one we're gonna see a self-destruct popped out by kiwami not gonna find anyone seasons immediately taking out depresso boat following suit this is not looking very good for bay state at the moment this may be the first point going to northwood Got a free shatter here if Faded needs to use it though. There's no shield on the side of Northwood to block this one right now. He's just gotta line it up and there it goes. Slams down onto Landon. Landon taken care of as Kiwami dives him past that Ant Matrix. And right now we're just seeing Boat trying to make a last stand here for Northwood Esports, but it looks like it might be too little too late in this fight. Just as I say it though, Seasons comes in, swinging for the fence, is able to clean up too, but Bay State does eventually get their first take. Yeah, that was an amazing play from Depresso, getting the point. I love the Tracer switch. They had to get there in the nick of time, and it proved to work for them, right? That Tracer came in, took a lot, of, picked apart the back line, took out Dynasty, took out Seasons, and Northwood now regrouping. They had to utilize a lot of ultimates to hold that point, but they do have Earth Shatter, and they do have Self Destruct coming online, as well as Beat Yamitra. All three of those ultimates coming up at the same time. That's huge. Sound Barriers drop. Seasons pushing in with the rest of the roster. Dynasty setting a pick apart from the rest. Diving into the back line, and it looks like the Rocket Punch is coming in. That is huge. The Meteor Strike taking out nobody, but doing a good job of distancing the rest of Bay State probably long enough for Northwood to secure this first point. And as I say that, they get in in time. Wow, Bay State not giving up without a fight. No, we're not gonna see them give up without a fight all game long. Expect this one to just be tooth and nail to the bitter end as Faded slams down both, but unfortunately for him, doesn't get the shield back up in time to defend the damage out of Landon's rifle. And Landon takes down the main tank for Bay State. Now there's a lot of space out there for Northwood to work with, but they're still just trying to cleave away at these staggers coming in. Neb goes down, Kiwami follows after, and after a long, hard-fought round one, we've got Northwood with a 1-0 lead here on Li Zhang. What I really love watching about the Legends division, Berkeley, is uh, the high level just micro that you see in Overwatch at this division. We're seeing punches being thrown out after every ability on almost every hero. We're seeing uh, very minuscule, very small uh, sight lines that are being taken advantage of by both DPS on both sides. And we're seeing a lot of these two man groups taking apart and picking apart these fights. We saw it a lot in that last map with Depresso and Abs and Neb just grouping up as a three and taking point, stalling point long enough for Bay State to get in. I, that's what I love seeing at this level of Overwatch. And Nuke, another fun thing about this level too is even though the highest level of Overwatch, you might think the meta is just mirror copping each other time after time, but 
in these first two points of Li Zhang, we are seeing different strategies, and that is what these teams right. separate themselves with. Nav opening up with the boop on Tiamitra, and Landon goes down as well. It looks like Northwood is left without a backline in Bay State. They storm right onto this point with a very swift dive nuke, and they clean house. Yeah, Bay State definitely flipping the script this time getting to point a little bit faster than Northwood, which is expected from their comp. Seasons will be on that Orisa, and that without a Lucio is going to be hard and to get to point just a little bit slower. Bay State's invested in that full dive composition, and that's what allowed them to get in early and get those picks off of Northwood. And this is one of the more difficult points in all of Overwatch, just to flip back your way. Those bridges make it almost impossible to rotate around the coast side of this map, so I would expect both teams to end up going through this white room as players like to shot, call it out as. But still, it's no easy way to get to point. Nem does go down first. That's a good window opened up for Northwood, but this dive comp is going to be very tough for them to focus down. They've got to make something happen fast. Faded just primaling the point, making it look like a bounce house out there, and Bay State able to swing back the fight as Presso picks up two, but they're going to need some more here. Boat and Dynasty coming in, Boat picking up one, popping the Blossom, and now we've just got a duel between the Reapers, but it doesn't look like it's one that Northwood can win. Unfortunately, Boat not getting the teleport they were looking for, teleporting to the edge of the bridge and getting caught out immediately by Cabe. Yeah, Bay State holding true on this one, doing a great job of just keeping the aggression up. And like you said, this is one of the hardest points in Overwatch. They're holding fort. We saw Northwood pop uh, the Baptiste alt, the amplification matrix inside of the point, trying to get value, but base states got the rotation. They just moved around. Depresso's gonna dive in with the copy ability, try to get some value. Oh. We're gonna see a massive no you Uno reverse card from Cave. The Death Blossom and the Field of Flowers are flourishing, taking out a majority of Northwood. Yeah, don't step into Cabe's garden. Everyone wants to be inside the fence, but Cabe quick to shut the gate on Northwood's next attack. And now they've just got 6% to go here. Six measly seconds to get onto the point. It looks like they're too far away, but in this division, you can never count anyone out. That Sim TP comes in in the nick of time as Kiwami and Burger Bandit just fight for a touch there. Both tanks on the side of Northwood go down, but I wouldn't expect them to say die in this fight just yet as the DPS find a pair of kills onto the base state tank line. And now this one is quickly anyone's game, but it is a four versus three favoring Bay State. Bay State losing to Presso there, evens this one back out. Dynasty trying to pump in some more damage, but Cave answers the call for being quickly dealt with by Boat. Still, this one just tooth and nail nuke. This is going to be the story of the night as Northwood somehow, some way, make a flip out of almost a desperation play. It's, it's literally the reverse storyline that we saw from the last map, Berkeley. That's exactly what happened to Bay State. They took it back with it, the nick of time to come back and they took it to, what, about 20-30% before Northwood was able to recap. I expect that's what we're going to see from this attempt to come back in now. Faded popping the fri Primal Rage on point. Cave getting a pick on Landon. And we're going to see Depresso get the pick on Dynasty immediately. But Dynasty's turret taking out Depresso. That is the value of Symmetra. On this point, you throw those turrets down. They're hard to see. Ooh, the massive sim wall coming up and blocking out half of the point straight through the middle seasons gonna find a pick as well bay state having a hard time of recapping this point northwood does have a better uh tent that they're pitching as of co comp to comp yeah and i think their wrecking ball composition with seasons on that hero gives them a little more dive capability just with how you can cycle those cooldowns on that hero it can just be a little more rapid fire than faded on this winston but of course you don't get the benefit of that shield we'll see if a big bubble play comes in handy for them here as the tanks go in deep came popping the blossom for a pair of kills on the amitra and dynasty not done there as he takes down burger bandit trying to find more and it looks like Burger Bandit cleaned up in pilot form and the flip should come through here, but they've got to deal with seasons quick. And that is why Wrecking Ball can be so good in these contest phases, but it does actually go the way of Bay State and Northwood able to get back in just the nick of time, but they've got to make more of a stay on this point. Burger Bandit finds his way into the Koi Fish Pond, doesn't quite find the ground he was looking for, and that could be crucial for Northwood. Bay State might actually be able to pull away from this fight as Neb pops the sound barrier to support all of Bay State. Overtime still bleeding down, but this contest nowhere near done as a Death Blossom gets popped mm. there from Boat, but it comes up relatively empty as he goes down to Kiwami. And more ultimates here being invested by Bay State as they finally put an end to the round and tie this one up one apiece. 
What I loved was Kiwami threw the self-destruct in the back half of point while Bay State had coverage on the front half, ensuring that that wrecking ball was not getting back in. Seasons did a beautiful job uh, with the switch to wrecking ball and staying on point, ensuring that they were holding that time up, resetting that clock whenever they could to allow the rest of Northwood time to regroup and get back to point. Unfortunately, Bay State just had it lock and key. They were not allowing Northwood to get back on that point, which leaves us 1-1 in the series. This is right where I want to be. 1-1 on our very first map. Both teams not looking any bit weaker or stronger than the other in any aspect of play so far. In compositions, this is the first time, Nuke, we've actually got almost a mirror matchup. The presser will be on his famed Echo, and we do have Boat on the Sombra. So we'll actually see... If there's going to be a hack difference here, as those two tanks Ooh, on the side of true. base state are great targets, but still, the amount of damage Depresso can do on Echo, and the amount of value he gets out of every single copy could be the difference maker for base state. We'll just have to wait and see. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I'm eager to see as well how these Zenyatas and Brigettes do on both sides. Seeing a hack come out immediately, both targeting uh, Depresso almost immediately, trying to take them out. Abs now on the back of point. Trying to get some of these Discord orbs out, allow some support for the rest of the team. You see Tracer try to dive off point, but they are going to recall almost immediately. That's going to be a kill for Cave onto Yamitra. Now, Bay State securing point Northwood, trying to dance around it, looking for their end, but I don't think they're going to find it quite yet. They're, that's going to solicit a regroup. However, they were able to cap 18% as they did take the point first and early. And Nuke, if you want to see some very intense Overwatch, let's just get a spectate here onto Abs, the Zenyatta player for Bay State College. To play this completely stationary glass cannon hero at a high level, you are under so much duress constantly, especially against a dive comp. Of course, he's rotating around the outside of the map here, but the amount of pressure that comes in so fast, so swiftly, as Dynasty, Seasons, and Burger Bandit all close in on one target. Usually it's Abs, but right now, Abs is still relatively safe for the time being. Having that transcendence in the back pocket uses it to just bail out Bay State for a few more moments as they're just looking to keep this point for as long as they can. Chew up as much of the time as they can in this round, taking away from Northwood, but still landing. Coming in the Zenyatta on the other side with two kills, and that is going to get the flip for Northwood. Yeah, Kiwami tried to pop the self-destruct on point right after we saw Landon throw out the transcendence, but Northwood just backed up. They did the, as we say, the most OP thing in Overwatch. They backed up, they waited for the opportunity, and they re-engaged. Took out Kiwami before they were able to remech, and then called it there. Uh, Bay State now re-engaging with two ultimates online. They do have the minefield, and they do have the pulse bomb. Either could work in this situation. We're going to see the minefield actually come out from Faded. Ooh, and the stick's going to come out on Landon. Cracking open this fight. Wide open, actually. Bay State with a massive advantage now. Taking out two on the side of Northwood. Not quite that it's over for Northwood. They could regroup here. And they actually do have someone on point retouching Seasons. Trying to stall out this time. But it's going to die for it almost immediately on point. Someone's still contesting. Bay State left scratching their head a little bit. A little bit here as they hit a bit of a speed bump. They won that fight a few moments ago, but didn't get the flip for about 15 or 20% as Northwood got a very good contest in there. And now one of the most interesting fights of the map boat is almost at that EMP. And that Ooh. is the biggest ultimate. He'll definitely be sending it in, probably targeting abs to oh, take no. down that Zenyatta shield, go for that cheeky little one hit, but no! Oh, Foiled by Cave diving boat as he tried to get toward that mega health pack and stay safe. And Depresso copies Boat and gets the EMP of his own, but unfortunately that one found no targets. Still though, that is the difference an Echo can make. Anytime you're on a Sombra versus an Echo, you're giving an Echo potentially two EMPs in the time you get that duplicate off. Right, I, I guess this is a lot of micro, but I would have loved to have seen uh, a little bit more of a play from Bay State there. Depresso could have probably pushed up, gotten a bigger EMP from that. But we are going to see a hack in the back line. Northwood now sneaking up and taking out Bay State, uh, sweeping out the ground from underneath them, actually, recapping the point. And small fights like that are what could really determine this entire set, right? We saw Depresso kind of pop that EMP just off of point. 
Uh, I think it was a little bit of a panic, not sure when that copy would run out. All they had to do was, you know, get up in their face a little bit, get aggressive on the side of base state, keep Northwood off, and that would allow them maybe even up to that 99%, but now they're fighting tooth and nail to recap for this final pit fight. And a good thing here for Bay State is they don't have to deal with that EMP in the final fight. Boat is only at 34%, so that is just sweat that they don't have to be perspirating here. Ooh. They've actually got a pretty calm fight in front of them as Neb gets off the rally. Everyone is very well supported as Abs is there with the Transcendence as well. Faded lays down the minefield and they've got this point pretty well sealed off from Northwood. Northwood actually is struggling to get a footing here onto the objective and it's not going to get any easier as Seasons gets collapsed on <gasps> by three members of Bay State but Dynasty is there to answer with a pulse bomb stick onto Neb. A copy comes in here. Depresso lets a diva bomb fly zoning up Point, taking down Burger Bandit and slamming down into a double kill. The back line for Northwood wow. completely dealt with. And what a clutch copy there from Depresso at the biggest moment of the round. But he's still got to clutch this one out. Seasons back on the point and contesting. But Depresso, mm. the hero for Bay State, wins them Li Zhang Tower. And they are up one to nothing in our set. It's almost as though Depresso heard me, uh, you know, criticizing that copy earlier and said, no, don't don't worry, homie, I got you. Uh, I got I got a copy right here for you. I, I think that was a beautiful play. Choosing to copy the D.Va allows a lot for the team having that third tank in the mix. And wow, what a remix. That was squish just grimy. Yeah, wow. squishing both of the squishies in the corner. Got to give it to Depresso for that one. That was a great play. And overall, 500 IQ. Yeah, Nuke, I think we're going to see a lot of that 500 IQ stuff tonight. And right off the bat, Li Zheng Tower does not disappoint. If you're watching this one, you're blessed with some fantastic Overwatch. And it is not going to stop anytime soon. We're going to be going over to our first hybrid map of the night. And that is Blizzard World. Given what we've just seen, Chase, what can you expect from... Let's just say Bay State is they're probably going to be the first attacking team here. What do you think they're going to run on their offense? Well, I can tell you no matter what they run, it'll be versatile. And both of these teams are doing a great job of just adapting and understanding what the other side is throwing at them. They seem to almost have an answer for it. And that's what makes this series so close. Now, with us going to Hollywood, I think we could see a variety of comps. I, I, I think really anything is on the table at this point. Either way, we'll probably see a, re a cave on a Reaper. That Death Blossom has been invaluable and gotten so many picks in just the first three control rounds. Uh, we could see Reinhardt's on both sides. I think it's not going to matter what we see at the beginning because it's going to transition so often with how much these teams have a, a deep understanding of uh, the meta of Overwatch. I think we're actually swapping sides here, so it looks like Northwood will be the first attacking team here as we go into Blizzard World. So a pretty long walk to the first objective. Poke comps can actually kind of come away with great defenses. I mean, I know in my ranked games, I'm a mere Masters player. I don't even hold a torch to these gaming warlords we got here tonight, but Torb Hanzo, Nuke, how many times do I have to tell you that Torbjorn is awesome these days? Uh, and I shake my head every time, every time. Uh, but you know, I, 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 I know your, I know your love for Torbjorn, uh, and we share the same love for Reinhardt. I, I, I'm gonna be looking for these Earth Shatters actually on this map if, if both teams decide to run big, big daddy Rhine. Yeah, I mean, I I love a Ryan v. Ryan duel, and I like how we got that a little bit there on Li Zhang Tower Control Center, but I think for the most part, these teams might be sticking with that Wrecking Ball Diva composition, especially in tonight's rather open kind of map pool, but I guess time will tell. I mean, Blizzard World does have some brawly points to it. That Reinhardt Shield can definitely help you on your long walk to the first point, and in terms of just these two teams matching up, we know that in the ABC League, the Activation Blizzard Collegiate League, uh, Bay State won a 2-1 to -one game, very close. Northwood's reason, again, Landon was on a laptop. Landon's not on a laptop tonight, and Bay State just stole around. Do you think that Northwood, a two-time champ of the last semester, could actually be the underdog in this crazy game we've got on our hands? Well, 
I will say it's the wolves versus the bulldogs, right? So it could go either way. They're both dogs, you know. It could, it could go either way. But I gotta say, you know, Northwood looking looking real sus right now, guys. Pull it together. We know you guys got it. We saw the first point. You've proved yourselves in the past. And Landon's not on a laptop anymore. So no, <laughs> no more, no more Johns for this set. And again, chat, we've switched sides. So Northwood will be the red team, if you're observing this one, and Bay State, the defending blue team here. And we don't quite have the compositions yet, so time will tell what Northwood will be attacking with as they start. But we will get an earlier look at Bay State's composition in just a few seconds as they're going to be gathering their members shortly. And it looks like the double shield composition coming out Ooh. for both teams. The only difference here likely wow. going to be forgotten on the hit scan Ash. And then we've got Boat on the Hanzo, at least for now. Both of these snipers can do a ton of damage, especially at high ranks with not a lot of players miss a lot of shots. But I've got to give my edge here to Boat on the Hanzo. It just seems like yeah. Hanzo can dish out a little bit more damage, especially against double shields with that Storm Arrow nuke. What are your thoughts? Oh, no, absolutely. Plus, I, I think Gravitic Flux with Dragons is is just much better than Gravitic Flux and Bob, right? So so I think that if Burger Bandit and Boat are able to time their ultimates together, that could spell some trouble for Bay State. Yeah, and Bay State forgotten their Ash player actually just got subbed in for Depresso, who was their insane flex DPS on Li Zhang Tower, their Echo player, who might have actually just won them that first map. So yeah. Bay State, they know what just happened, who the playmaker in that last point of Li Zhang was, and they are trusting the depth of their lineup, sending in Forgotten to this map here on Blizzard World, giving them a tall order playing Ash first point of defense, especially not quite as warmed up as he'd like to be, having not played Li Zhang, but First fight about to be underway here. Dynasty trying to close in on the first oh, kill. With its one HP! Holy low! And Neb hitting the whip shot, sending him back to spawn, but still. Northwood Esports. You can never count them out. They come in and answer with three quick kills, and they're pushing this double shield of Bay State back. And now they've got no barriers left, and this first point should be taken here by Northwood. Yeah, Northwood, I. It would need be nothing short of a miracle for Bay State to make it back with the composition that they have. Taking out abs, that's going to be it. And Northwood is going to take that first point for sure. Wow. And what a very fast first point from Northwood. They came in with the aggression. They used the double shields to their advantage. Bay State just wasn't quite able to get around the corner. That's what's so hard about defending on that first point for Blizzard World, right? You have to be off to the side. You have to catch it with your shields and Forgotten just wasn't <laughs> quite there. Uh, but, you know, as I say that, Forgotten ending the dynasty as it would be. And Burger Bandit throwing out the Gravitic Flux, trying to get something here for Northwood. Once again, sides are switched, so Northwood is in the red. Bay State will be in the blue. What a great flank there by Forgotten. But now has to go in again. Does mm. take down Dynasty with another headshot. Dynasty. Forgotten has got your number right now. What are you gonna do about it? You've got a pulse bomb. Let's see if you put Forgotten's name all over it. Oh, I imagine. I mean, if I was Dynasty, I'd be looking straight for Forgotten. Uh, you're, you're not getting that on me twice there, bud. We're actually seeing Dynasty try to come in, try to throw out the pulse bomb, but it's not gonna find anyone. I actually didn't even hear the, the sound come out for it. It looked like he chucked it, it right there on the stairs. Was not eaten, but I don't think it had much of an impact there. I mean, mm -hmm. obviously didn't get the stick. He was throwing it at Forgotten, but again, just came <laughs> up empty. Forgotten had his wits about him. Kiwami gets knocked into a backline. That's actually very difficult positioning for him to recover from, but it doesn't look like he's the target of focus right now. Faded, stepping up with that supercharger, and Bay State Ooh. knows how to focus with a damage boost. They are lights out right now, defending spawn on Northwood. Who does this? I actually love that Bay State played that as they did. They tried to bait out some things from Northwood. They got up in their face. Northwood was like, what are you doing, man? Why, why are you up here? And then the supercharger got popped, and they quickly realized their transgressions. 
Yeah, and I love that aggressive investment there from base state. They retreat here as they know that they probably can't bait out too much more in this fight, especially with almost no ultimates in their bank here. And of course, Northwood has quite a ways to push here. But Burger Bandit opens this one up with a flux. The double shields dueling up on this crucial high ground. Dragon Strike coming in. That's going to take care of Faded. You gotta find more though. One pick is never enough in these fights. Both teams clearly capable of clawing it all the way back any chance they get abs able to take down burger bandit but dynasty finally gets a little bit of revenge they're on forgotten cave now going in taking down yamitra but dynasty making a little bit of a name for himself in this fight finds his second pick with a stick onto neb now it's just the tracers trying to outvalue one another but it looks like cave might be too long for this world as dynasty the victor of this fight helping north would keep this payload and drive yeah, and it looks like Northwood is going to get halted here. Base State now clearing around the corner. Northwood finding themselves only with three around to be able to do anything. Unfortunately, I think their Dragon Strike Gravitic Flux combo was just a little too late. Those dragons came out a little bit longer than oh, what ex forgotten. was expected, but we're seeing what Forgotten. Was that flick? Uh, forgotten is actually insane on this ash and i i think it's a toss-up right now as to who's having more value forgotten on ash or boat on hanzo we were spectating right there and we didn't actually get forgotten's pov but we had dynasties and i could see forgotten just looking up at that high ground and then it looked like a one frame flick right on the dynasty's head that was disgusting but dynasty again just struggling here on this second point of blizzard world goes down there in the duel to cave Right now, Northwood, they've got a minute and a half left. And they've got to find an answer to this Bay State second point defense fast. Oh, like now. They have to find it now. Uh, with a minute left, they have so much space still to cover. And uh, this is a good place to hold on defense. Boat trying to get some value, not finding anything. We're going to see the Supercharger come out from Seasons. Seeing if they're able to grab anything. Forgotten throwing the bob in the back line. And that's going to be it for Bay State. As in, they're, they're taking it, right? That's that, Meaning that's it for Northwood. <laughs> Up in the kill feed there again. Forgotten nailing another headshot on to Dynasty. Forgotten comes into this game not having played around one. He's coming in cold. And he has been as lights out of a hit scan player as I've seen from any team all season long. And this is after Depresso was just debatably the winner of Li Zhang Tower for this Bay State squad. And Forgotten is like, hey man, don't forget about me. We got a star studded lineup and they're looking to make their final stand here on defense. They've got to thwart off Northwood for one more fight, but Northwood coming in with two quick kills, make it three and four for the Timberwolves Ooh. as they need this second point streets phase. They want it bad, Nuke. Yeah, big risk, big reward coming out from base state as you said forgotten subbing in kobe trying to get onto point seasons trying to get a pick onto forgotten in the back line the dragons are going to come out vote finding the pick on cave kiwami finding it on dynasty and now we're in overtime very last push here 0.68 meters left Gravitic Flux is coming out from Kiwami, taking out one and two in the form of Seasons, and that's going to be it from the push. What a hold. What a hold indeed, and I love at the end there, Abs was just dueling Boat. Boat had the high ground up on Hanzo, looking so dangerous, but then a bouncy little Lucio boy comes out of nowhere and just duels Boat for like 20 seconds just to try and keep the damage dealer on Northwood at bay for the rest of that fight. And Nuke, a gigantic hold. I mean, Bay State, very capable of getting the payload past that distance on second point. It's looking like they could go up two maps to none here on Blizzard World, and what an advantage that would be. That would be huge. That would be everything. They just have to make sure that the offense is as uh, uh, well thought out and strategic as the defense. And I love the macro plays we're seeing from both of these teams, trying to bait out ultimates, getting onto point, even the supercharger play, getting up in their face, throwing it down. Uh, the Dragon Strike with the Gravitic Flux combo coming out from Northwood was really, really cool. And we actually are going to see some changes come out on the side of Northwood as well. Dynasty going to be on the Hanzo and Boat going to be now on the Ash. And Bay State looks like they're going to stay the same. Never mind. As I say that, Forgotten switching over to the Widowmaker. Cabe going to be on the Symmetra and Abs now on 
the Percy. Five. Yeah, I would be pretty shocked if Bay State actually ran this composition. It's just not something I would ever expect to see in this Legends Division matchup, but this is certainly throwing a wrench at Northwood Esports. And to your point, Nuke, I like the adaptations that Northwood made with their comp, now having two snipers, especially for this first point, like we were saying, such a long walk. The sight lines are very linear here, so Dynasty and Boat both have a ton of potential to find massive value with these picks. Yeah, Forgotten and Cave actually switching back. They were trolling just a tad bit. Ooh, we're going to see some dynamite thrown in the back line on either team. Bay State making their approach now, and Northwood trying to hold this corner. Let's see if Forgotten can get an early pick. Burger, Burger Bandit will actually find the first pick of the round, taking out Kiwami. Burger Bandit once again looking for something, trying to sneak around the side for Bay State, but that means that the shield will not be on the other side. The Arisa will have to hold down the fort there. And I love how Bay State just back up a little bit, but they really don't give up in this fight. They don't retreat past the statue. They start to bunker up in this mega health pack building on the right side of Burger Bandit right now. Mm. And we can see the aggression starting to ramp up as Faded gets back into the fight. They've now got their two barriers back, but Neb goes down and you hate to lose that Brigitte early in a fight. That is so much AOE healing you get on this composition and now Northwood turning the tables flipping the script with four picks and they make Bay State turn to dust on that second push yeah Bay State got a little snowballed in that push that's what's so difficult about this first point they they made a good decision in backing up and re-engaging together but Cabe was in the back line trying to find something with the tracer Northwood immediately recognized it and took them out I think Burger Bandit did a great job of rotating around the side ensuring that that tracer couldn't get in and once they had located it regrouped with the rest of the team as to not be taken by surprise this is just beautiful overwatch coming out from both teams and Bay State now regrouping trying to take this point again Landon actually will not have ultimate online, but that won't matter. Ultimates are coming out all around. We're hearing the Bob come out. As I'm saying that, Boat gonna throw it out and die immediately. Forgotten and K both finding picks on the Bob and Boat. Wow. Burger Bandit tried to pop a Gravitic Flux right there, but stunned immediately by Neb. Mm. The Brig from the ground floor taking down the flying Gravitic Flux. And that might just be enough to get Bay State the fight win here as they're looking to capture first point with about a three and a half, almost four minute time bank to get this payload to its final destination. Yeah, and they are pushing up immediately. I mean, they are taking their advantage and absolutely running with it. Bay State pushing on the high ground and Northwood actually trying to get up here to contest, but this is not a good look if they try to push this. Bay State already has the ground. They just have to wait for them to push up and then shove right into him. Pulse Bomb coming out in the back line. Actually, Dynasty taking out Neb. This could flip the script for Northwood. Now that they're on the high ground, they're pushing Bay State back. Bay State now needing to regroup on the payload. We're going to see Boat take out Abs and Bay State now in a very comparable position as the roster is getting picked apart one by one by one. Oh, forgotten. Absolutely nasty encountering Dynasty to this game. Falls down to 15 HP. Hits the final body shot, taking care of the Northwood Tracer player. And now it should just be a battle between the snipers here as Forgotten is just jousting for this high ground. He would love the perfect positioning to lace in some sniper rounds, but it looks like Northwood is just defending this very well as it's very tricky for Bay State to pretty much find any ground. This high ground nuke has been pivotal in this game. Oh, absolutely. I mean, we've seen both teams fight over it. I think every match, the amplification matrix comes oh, out stuck at the same in the time air. the supercharger does. Wait, that stuck hit in the air? He stuck Burger Bandit. Wow. That was after Burger Bandit's last flux was stunned by a brig. I mean, Burger Bandit. Oh, you gotta no. put the Air Jordans on and get up a little higher because <laughs> you're not leaving the ground enough, my friend. Wow, and maybe they're just looking for the angles because I mean, the first, the first moment that you hear that come out, right? You're looking in the air immediately, trying to find him, and Burger Bandit staying towards the ground. They read it immediately, killing him. That was crazy. Landon also taking out Bob. Uh, speaking of immediately, almost immediately forgotten through that in the back line. Landon said, no, 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 not today, friend. They've got 20 meters to push this payload. This is the first time we've seen a team rotate to this side, trying to attack the high ground. 
Flux coming out safely from Kiwami this time. Burger Bandit could take some notes on that one. Faded able to clean up boat off of that slam and Neb going in. He's got his foot on the throttle. Him and Faded duel up for three kills there. Landing the last one to go. Closing in now, Yamitra a, falls and sweep. Neb makes the space almost all himself acting like a Reinhardt player and Bay State are going to go up two to nothing here over Northwood Esports. Yeah, Bay State precariously picked all of the members of Northwood apart there. Saw the opportunity and took it in stride. Neb will be the play of the game on the brig. Let's see what they did here. The rally gets popped out. This was this final fight. As we actually saw this on cast. They ran up and then <laughs> catches Landon in the back, pushes up, says, oh, hey, there you are. And now catches uh, the um, enemy brig almost immediately. Yamitra falling. Wow. Um, map two going to base state. Yeah, this is a flashy game of Overwatch we're seeing so far. Northwood really did bounce back, though, despite having a lackluster attack. They really got it together there on defense and made Bay State have to work incredibly hard. They showed that this game is still very close. Despite being a 2-0 Bay State score, Northwood is right there. These teams are neck and neck, and the score could flip really at any point, Nick. And in terms of just the flip potential we've got, the reverse sweep, now we could see it would be incredible if this one went to map five or six. It's bound to be a gauntlet. Do you have anything you want to say before we take a short break on our way to map number three? I think everything is coming down in terms of value to who is able to shut down whose ultimates faster. And we're just seeing Bay State, as soon as they hear those audio cues, going in on Northwood and halting all of these ultimates before they're even able to come out. We saw it with Burger Bandit twice. We saw it in the first map. And I think we'll see it when we return from the short break.
All right, now that I'm unmuted in vMix chat, welcome back to what has been an unbelievably exciting match so far. I'm joined by Chase Nuclear Nukem in what has been an unreal 2-0 so far, where Bay State leads over Northwood, and we are headed to Watch Point Gibraltar next. Nuke, this is a much more open map than previously played on Blizzard World. Are we looking like we're going to be going back to dive comps here, or do you think Double Shield still has its place? Oh, I definitely think we're going to be seeing some dive compositions on this map. However, it depends on what point of the map we're on, right? Dive is really good for this hangar area. It's also really good for this secondary area out in the open, but uh, you can find a lot of value in these brawl comps or even the double shield comps, um, so they could get thrown out as well. As I say that, we are going to see a dive comp come from both teams. Dynasty, for the first time tonight, going to pull out the sword, switch over to the Genji. We're also going to see Abs switch over to the Ana, I, I believe, as well for the first time this evening. Fadig will be on Monkey, Monkey Time with Winston. This is a very uh, diverse cast that we have on both sides. Yeah, and I like the setup for Bay State. You've still got Forgotten on this. Ash clearly has the hit scan chops on lock after that last round. Counter Dynasty about as much as you possibly could with Dynasty playing a very exceptional tracer all night long. And on the side of Bay State, keep an eye out for Neb just guarding abs with insane skill, using all of those cooldowns, the stun, the whip shot to keep everyone away from his fellow support abs on the Ana as much as possible because you are going to just fall apart on watch point Gibraltar dive versus dive if you lose your supports. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they have to keep these supports alive at all costs. Abs even now sitting here half health, needing to get a little bit more Riku. And they're gonna play around this bridge now pushing in. That's gonna be a lot of alt charge actually on the side of Forgotten. Boat taking out the first pick on Cabe, and we're going to see Faden take out that Immortality Field almost immediately. Boat now with the second pick on Neb. That's going to bring one of those supports down, and Boat with the pick on Faded. I'm sorry. Everyone get on, because it's time for a shipment. Boat is taking us out just as it's taking out Base State. Cutting through that first point like butter, Boat stepped it up in that opening engagement there on watch point Gibraltar to kick off our map number three. And that can happen after a break. You go down 2-0, you're one of the best programs in the entire country. You know how to adapt, you know how to make a change. So much of esports nuke is mental and the best programs are so proficient at just getting back into a game where it looks like they're no longer favored. But Boat makes a statement with that first fight. Now, going into fight number two, engaging on the catwalk just outside of the spaceship here. On the second point of watch point, Gibraltar Boat comes in trying to make a play here, but no room to get any value out of the high noon there for the Cole Cassidy on the side of Northwood. Faded, bouncing into the mega health pack room. Takes down Landon and Boat. Ooh. Dynasty though, able to close in on the support for Bay State as Abs falls, but it looks like Bay State should still have this one in the bag. Yeah, Faded just erasing everything that Northwood threw at them. That primal rage in such a small room is gonna cause a lot of disruption and Northwood now having to regroup Bay State really put them at bay. Northwood, though, coming back with three ultimates online could turn the tides of this. We're actually going to see a bit of a sneaky play as Dynasty trying to push that payload a little bit. Going to get recalled almost immediately. And Bay State with a great vantage point on top of the ship. We're going to see the self-destruct sent out. Going to find Kiwami, but that's not going to matter because Faded now taking out the entirety of Northwood with that Tesla cannon. And that's why you run the Ana for this composition for Bay State. You're going to slap probably every single nano boost this game onto Faded and just send that Winston deep into the back line of Northwood Esports with just so much resources to deal with pretty much everyone on that team. There's not much they can do about a nano boosted Winston just pouncing right on them. And look at this positioning from Bay State, holding the high ground of all high grounds on top of the spaceship. This is very difficult positioning for Northwood to dislodge them from, especially running an Orisa composition. It's going to be so difficult, but slowly and surely they are pushing this Payload Dynasty, just getting it closer and closer, putting some pressure on Bay State to make a move. But it looks like they're doing a good job so far of just countering him a little bit, making it sure the pressure is on anytime he steps foot onto Payload. He does again here, but it looks like he is contested. Boat goes down here to Kiwami as 
Zarya on the side of base state. High charged has the grab in pocket. Base state now has to do something as Dynasty continues to poke and prod at this objective. But it looks like base state keeping the edge. Graviton Surge, gonna lock up everyone here on the side of Northwood. They have popped their Supercharger, trying to amplify a little bit more damage here as they finally got to find a crack in this base state armor. They've been coming up empty so far, but they're closing in strong now with just three meters to go on this payload push. Along the second point of watch point Gibraltar, Dynasty closes Ooh. in with a pulse bomb. That one lands onto Neb, taking down the brig, dueling down Cave and Dynasty. He's at 17 HP, he's hungry for more. He's got blood in the water, he can smell it. He wants to go in and he finds another kill onto Forgotten the Ash that has done so well to counter him to this point. Dynasty, wow. disgusting, you're on a tear, my friend, go on. Yeah, absolutely, Dynasty, I mean, making history here today. And the headshot from Boat is gonna take out Faded, that may be it. Dynasty really putting Northwood in a comparable position in an awesome place, being able to push this payload through the back end, base state not even realizing, trying to get there in time. Burger Bandit gonna take out Forgotten Abs, gonna jump off the map, re map recognizing that Northwood has taken this point. And with three minutes left to push, Northwood looking pretty good to end this and take it all the way. And Dynasty sticks another pulse bomb on to Neb. It is 10 12 here on the East Coast, just 12 minutes after the start time of your normal scheduled paid programming, The Dynasty Show, which we are all currently witnessing as this man has torn up Watchpoint Gibraltar, now pressuring abs again. And it looks like he is just a one man wrecking crew for this Northwood team going in. This man has no stop in him right now. Bay State has to do something. Their defense was looking good up until Dynasty started to tear it apart. Now it looks like Bay State set up pretty well here to defend. Faded pop in the primal trying to juggle away at Boat, but Boat well defended wow. there by his squad. You love to see that peel at the highest level of play to defend your Widowmaker, and Boat is able to stay alive. And Northwood is still strong in this fight. Yeah, it is time to buy low, because Northwood investing all of their ultimates now, and they're going to need to find value. If Boat can get the headshot onto Abs, that might be the value that they're looking for. They will find it in the form of Burger Bandit getting the melee, but dying almost immediately as they're going to get booped off the map. Cave getting the pick on boat as well is going to leave Northwood in a position to regroup and re-engage. However, utilizing all of their ultimates in that fight put them, like I said, in a bad position. Base State, though, investing just as much. So I guess it was an equal trade on both ends, maybe favoring Northwood a little bit as they are now less than 25 feet, or sorry, 69 meters away from this point. Dynasty sticks another one. Those pulse bombs have been covered in glue tonight and they've had the names of the base state supports written all over them. Just 10 more meters to push here for Northwood as they just inch their way through Watchpoint Gibraltar with this Orisa Diva composition shield after shield. They've just gained meter after meter, but forgotten comes in, picks off Landon, and that could actually spell some trouble here for Northwood. They've got to find their way to stay in this fight with minimal supports. Yamitra under a lot of pressure here from the Tracer Cave. And it looks like trades are coming through now. Northwood still has an edge here. They've got three left in the fight, but spawns are in the favor of Bay State as they've gotten some members back in this one. It looks like they could swing it, Nuke. It's still anyone's game. I don't know. I just saw Northwood take out two on the side of Bay State. They're almost going to make it in time. They aren't oh. going to touch. And that is going to be to a major detriment of Bay State. Northwood doing a great job of poking and prodding in all of the right peculiar places to keep Bay State once again at bay. And I just want to touch on that Orisa composition again. I mean, this team, Northwood, was getting a little bit battered on that second point. They were making progress awfully fast, but Dynasty just... He knows the game. Touch the objective, it goes forward as long as there's no defense there. And Bay State was taking that high ground where they really didn't have much of a contest down low on the payload. They were choosing to find value in other places, and it won them three fights. But still, that payload, although it moved slow, it was almost always moving for Northwood. 
Oh, yeah, the entire time Northwood did a great job of keeping someone on that payload. Even Dynasty was sneaking it underneath the ship. And that's the trade-off that you have when you have a dive composition that's on top of the ship. It's kind of hard to see what's going on underneath. Northwood taking that to their advantage and just beaming through that second point. That was so fast. Bay State now going to have to match that same energy. And it looks like we're seeing some double bubble trouble coming out. Kiwami will now be on the Zarya. They're going to make some trades and see if this is going to get them the extra oomph they need to make it in time. And that is one thing that I've loved so much about this matchup tonight, Chase, is that these teams at the highest level have such different styles. Northwood choosing mm -hmm. to play the Orisa the entire duration of Gibraltar here and Bay State viewing this as a complete dive tank kind of map. They've ran the double bubble. They love Kiwami and what he's able to do with these projecteds onto Cave, onto Faded to buy them some space, have a little bit of peel for the back line. And the Northwood are just staying in the pocket behind that Orisa shield using natural cover and trying to use the map to play safe. And as things kick off now, Northwood doing a great job of just trying to keep this defense impenetrable. Cave, though, finding the pick on Dynasty could be what Bay State needs to push in. Boat just letting the bullets fly in the small hallway, and that's going to be hard to push through with Yamitra on the briquette right there, throwing out that flail, not allowing anyone to come through. Kiwami immediately, however, taking out that immortality field, and Yamitra will fall. Faded getting the first pick. Now it's just left and right. Neb taking him out. Kiwami back with some more, and Bay State. It's looking like they're going to take this first first push pretty quickly. Yeah, they've still got to round this final corner of first and Northwood. They never like to quit in a fight. They never like to give up a point for free, but it looks like this one with just meters to go. No, it is contested. I love it. Northwood, they are not going to give you any daylight today. They are going to make you fight for every single inch of this watch point Gibraltar map. Yamitra comes out and whip shots down the Tracer Cave. Kiwami has the Graviton Surge online, trying to find a target, but goes down to Seasons before getting that ultimate off. And that could be crucial for Bay State. They've thrown in some more investments as Bob goes into the mix. And it looks like the supports are dealt with on the side of Northwood, but Northwood is still standing very strong here with the tank line looking relatively impenetrable. Faded doesn't quite have the damage to do the job, but he is able to take down Boat. Seasons falls as well as Cave is back in the action, but for now it looks like Northwood are defending well. Yeah, the movement coming out from Faded is nothing short of spectacular. Diving in and out of the shield, trying to box Seasons, and changing levels, which is vital to not allowing free headshots. That was a great play from Faded, although fell. Um, Northwood did a great job of holding and getting there in the right time. That's what the series is boiling down to. Who's able to make it in the nick of time to these final fights, these final points. Pulse Bomb's going to come out, find Burger Bandit, but not going to quite kill. We are going to see the Graviton Surge come out as well from Kiwami, trying to hold Northwood up top. Tracer falling from above, Dynasty taking out Abs. Landon now with this field up in the upper right-hand corner, doing a great job of allowing the damage to fly from Northwood and Bay State will not be allowed to group up on this payload right now. They will have to regroup Boat, finding a headshot for good favor onto Forgotten. Not something Forgotten's going to forget anytime soon. Nuke, what do you think Northwood has done this map to just turn the tides here? I think that this entire map thus far, Northwood has done a great job of switching levels, staying on the high ground, and keeping Bay State out. They've taken one to two members out at the beginning of every fight, and it's left them at a disadvantage. And I think that if Northwood continues to do so, uh, Bay State could just get stuck here. It certainly could. This is the best Northwood has played all night. Bay State has some resources to use this fight. Abs has that nano boost and Faded is locked and loaded, but bounced away from the back line, not able to close this space. The supercharger comes out from Seasons and the focus fire is all over Faded, but he's still got some HP to play with, sitting at about 100. But Boat is Robert able to take down the Winston on the side of Bay State. But rallying here is Neb. As Bay State still looks to inch this payload forward, they've still got 10 meters to go as more ultimates are traded out. Kiwami closes in now on the Seasons. And it looks like Northwood, though, coming away with the kills. Forgotten, his Bob and Kiwami all taken down as overtime starts to bleed away. And the contest might be short-lived here from Bay State as they've only got a Winston, Tracer, and Brig to play with. And the Winston and Tracer, or Brig, are both down. 
Now Ooh. it's just Cave. Sticks, but immortality field there from Landon. His reactions are fast, abs and forgotten fall. Overtime still ticking, but that will be the dagger as Northwood sticks in to Bay State and they come away with their first map win. Yeah, Northwood did a great job of keeping Bay State there. And I think the synergy of ultimates on Northwood was just stronger on this set rather than on the side of Bay State. Sure, you saw Faded make some plays with the Winston and uh, it, it was valuable, but it wasn't the value that Bay State needed. The, the combinations coming out from Northwood was just uh, nothing short of perfect. I mean, they, they held Bay State there the entire time. And it, so, it felt almost like the final two minutes of that map, Bay State was very frantic, trying to find and, and grasp for that pick rather than allowing it to happen. They were trying to force something out that wasn't going to happen. Yeah, and Nuke, there was one exchange there where they had a Pulse Bomb and a Graviton Surge to use. The Pulse Bomb did not stick. And the Graviton Surge was thrown up onto the high ground where no follow-up could get done on it. I think that was probably Bay State's best chance. And then after that, like you were alluding to, it was almost acts of desperation to get that first point of watch point Gibraltar. But Nuke, as a college coach, a director as well, what does it do when you're down 2-0 in a series, you come away pushing the payload the entire distance of the map, and you get the full hold? What does that do to your mental to turn it around? It... It turns it around. I mean, context clues. It's exactly what you just said, Ult Charge. It, it turns it completely around. Northwood probably feeling a little more revitalized now and breathing some air into the life of this game. Bay State now recognizing as well that I, I don't think I saw very many changes at all in that map. Not a whole lot of transitions. And they're going to have to pull some more tools out of the toolkit to, to make something happen here. And I think they're going to have to realize that as we head into the next map. Tell me, where are we heading next, Berkeley? We're finally going to Hollywood. Let's take this one over to California and put on a absolute show because I am excited to see what these teams can get into as it will probably be a similar story. Northwood running in Orisa Comp, if I had to guess, on first and then second point since things change up so much. We might go dive v. dive, but I'm really not sure. These teams have surprised me tonight with the compositions they've both picked. And Nuke, I got to say, Going back to that point about just kind of turning it around, flipping the script, getting your mental back into the game. We are at the same score line as these teams were when Bay State beat Northwood in the Activision Blizzard Collegiate League. That one is just a best of three. So the two to one was a win for Bay State. They would have won this one tonight after the first two maps if this were that league. But we played best of five. So we get the full story here tonight in Northwood. They've got a chance to bring it all the way back right now as that was the best Overwatch they played tonight. And if they keep doing that, we could have a legendary game on our hands. This is why best of five is just a much better format, in my opinion. It allows for this back and forth, this storyline to kind of craft itself. Obviously, we're here to drive a narrative, but the narrative ultimately drives itself when you have a compelling format such as best of five. Moving into Hollywood, I'm pretty eager to see what these teams will both rock. If I'm honest, we could see some similar compositions to what we saw at a Blizzard World. We could see double shields come out from both teams. And what we're definitely going to see is both of these teams on the same sides as they were on the last map. Yeah, so it seems like that will mean Northwood will be attacking first. I like that look for them, especially after getting that previous full hold. You want to get right back to attack and see if you can put the pressure on Bay State to outperform you. Right now, Northwood, even though they're down 2-1, to one, I would say they're in the driver's seat of this game, which the scoreline being what it is, is so rare to have the team that's losing by a map to be definitely in the cockpit, controlling the tempo of this game going into map number four in a best of five. I've said it all night long. This one was bound to be a banger, and it has not disappointed. Nuke, is this exceeding expectations, even though we both were in Discord today? Just like, tonight's going to be awesome, right? Tonight's going to be awesome. <laughs> we were in Discord today talking about it a little bit and uh, kind of giving our, our, our predictions. I think that this is honestly to be expected. I, I, I would be surprised if we did not go to a game five in a set like this. Um, I think both teams are bringing the heat. That's not to say Bay State couldn't just shut this down here and now, they because they very much could. But Northwood now coming hot off the fire is ready to win. I, I really feel like the, with them attacking, if they could bring the pressure that they didn't watch point Gibraltar, that this could flip the series entirely. 
And it just like I could. said, Sorry, I was going to say, on. just like I said earlier, we are going to see the double shields come out from both sides. Boat will be back on the Hanzo Dynasty, back on the Echo. Cable stay on the Tracer, and Forgotten will stay on the Ash as well. Seeming like both teams are going back to their comfort picks that we saw previously on the Payload esque maps. And if we remember Blizzard World, where these two teams broke out the double barrier each, A State mm -hmm. came away with that map win two to one, but Northwood were able to put up a very good defense on second point. These teams were neck and neck. And that last map, Gibraltar, was the only time where we've had a scoreline with a little bit of a gap in it. Li Zhang was two to one, the side of Bay State. Like I just said, Blizzard World two to one for Bay State. But that Gibraltar map, that is the first time we've had a big difference in the scoreline in a map. And we'll see if Northwood can keep up that play. Yeah, Northwood going to try Forgotten, getting a couple of headshots on Burger Bandit. But Northwood now... Uh, just as the two Trailer Park girls, they are going round the outside. Bay State trying to get the high ground, getting some picks. Boat looking for some sauce, opening the fridge, Let's see if they're going to find any. It looks like Northwood just trying to pick, poke, and prod on this point, getting whatever they can. Bay State doing the OP thing, backing up while they can into this hotel and awaiting Northwood's push. Cape will open up this fight, taking out Dynasty almost immediately. And we are going to see the backfield come out almost immediately as well. That's going to be a huge amplification matrix. Landon has done this a few times tonight, winning the race to that amp matrix, which has made an edge for Northwood, but that is not the case here as Forgotten charges a bob insanely fast already to 33 percent to the next one that was a spectacle we just saw from forgot and caster's curse boat with the storm <laughs> arrow puts a couple in his brain i mean if you're able to get that dynamite sounded off with the coach gun or, or even with you know the viper the weapon then then i think that that just has so much ult charge behind it right that's exactly what we saw forgotten do charging up that ult immediately getting bob gravitic flux coming online that's going to be a very very low kiwami actually falling to landon for getting the fall out dragon strike coming out on corner a point going to take out faded cave out on Yamitra now and it looks like northwood may cap this point cape wrapping around trying to allow a final touch for bay state to get in here Cabe is pretty much the last chance here for Bay State as he's got to contest as long as possible. Able to chip down Dynasty despite being up in the skies. And now Cabe has some support behind him, but the rally coming in from Yamitra will be supporting Northwood fairly well, but I don't know if it's going to be quite enough as Cabe seems to be on a bit of a tear right now. He's gone on quite the run here on Tracer, finding two picks so far. Make it three as the rest of Bay State follow up and they hold Northwood to 88%. What a rally. It... it is a very reminiscent of <laughs> my gosh i don't know what's up with these late fight Stop headshots we're seeing there, from forgotten. boat yeah no but but boat is literally getting these late fight headshots it's like the fight's over everything's done boat gets a headshot <laughs> like almost every time uh we're gonna see the supercharger actually come out from faded to try to kick off this next fight Bay state pushing up a little bit getting in northwoods territory dynasty finding the pick on abs and also on faded dynasty cracking open this fight wide open for northwood and this may be what they need to cap kiwami popping the gravitic flux almost immediately trying to turn the five tides and bob will do that in turn as well man that is the second time we're seeing gravitic fuck flux bob work out really well for kiwami and forgotten yeah you can throw it through the slam to get a lot of damage on anything that bob comes in contact with or everyone is just up top in a shooting gallery if you send bob in just a little bit before but what interested me that last fight is forgotten goes down early to the headshot from boat and then base state down a member go through the initial choke and they make the most aggressive play possible. Mm -hmm. They don't lose members for overextending or anything. They play the natural cover around that SUV. But right now, it looks like Northwood might be stepping into them as this time they've surely overextended. And with only one tick to take, Northwood should get this. Yeah, Northwood definitely going to get this with five seconds left. But now they have two minutes and 30 seconds for quite a long time trek along those streets of hollywood cabe was trying to to get them to follow them but eh, it was, northwood was not falling for that one i love the back and forth dynamics and pace that we're seeing from both of these teams it seems like when northwood's expecting bay state to back up bay state's in their face and they're remaining unpredicted in their movement 
They definitely are. Their movement is impeccable this game, and the rotations that we've seen come around, the parts of the map we've seen utilized from the attacking teams has just been textbook. I mean, it's been an advanced textbook. It's been the honors course if you've been here watching. Cabe, a great stick, but Landon, again, reacts, throwing down that immortality field to save his own life, but not able to save the life of Burger Bandit, the diva player from Northwood falling mm. there. Dynasty finally getting the better of Forgotten, winning that duel outright, and we've got ourselves a 5v5. Yeah, Northwood now pushing in the Supercharger will come out from Seasons. Gravitic Flux coming out from Kiwami, trying to halt everything that Seasons throwing out. Dynasty and Yamitra, though, with Landon taking out the remainder of Bay State and continuing this aggressive push. They didn't even need to use all of their ultimates as Boat still has Bob, which might be the final sail that they need to get them to the final part of this point is they're going to wrap around, keep one person on payload and have the rest of the team take the high ground. And we've seen both teams do this all night long. Just have one person on the payload. Just keep it in first gear and get everyone else to the most valuable spots of the map. You want your ideal angle for your snipers. You want to defend them with your tank shields. And you want to make sure you've got at least one support up there to give everyone some HP to play with. But we've got 40 seconds to play here. The angles start to open up a little more for Northwood as it looks like Boat concedes that high ground to find the kill on the Kiwami. Forgotten trade that onto Dynasty and gets a Boat as well. The damage dealers on the side of Northwood have been dealt with. The Bob gets thrown in by Forgotten. And you are not going to forget this as Forgotten comes away with four kills in that fight. Nowadays, everybody want to talk like they got something to say. But nothing comes out when they move their lips. Just a bunch of gibberish. And people act like they have forgotten about Forgotten. And Forgotten is actually carrying Bay State right now, keeping Northwood back. That Bob play was absolutely massive, and doing everything that Bay State needed is all in Forgotten. What a play, and it's actually going to push it into overtime. The rally is going to come out from Yamitra, trying to scramble, getting the rest of Northwood online. Forgotten, getting Boat exceptionally low. Can't Cape is going to finish that one off. Dynasty will get the pick onto Forgotten first. And this is so back and forth. But Bay State looking like they have the advantage for sure. Getting all of Northwood off and stopping their progress. Nuke, these two teams played very similar compositions when we were on Blizzard World. And Bay State defended first. They stopped the payload about the same exact spot. Mm -hmm. almost to second point just on the final corner and now northwood will have to better their blizzard world round and make sure they end up with a big defensive hold here so a state doesn't come away with a win yeah i mean what do you think northwood needs to do to stop bay state at this point I don't know how to answer a 4.3k Ash who is playing <laughs> lights out, but somehow Dynasty has to step up against Forgotten. It's not easy when all Forgotten has to do if you're playing Tracer is hit you in the head and he mm -hmm. is executing, which is insane mm -hmm. at this level. Oh no, um, speaking of executing, Forgotten popping out the Widowmaker and like you said, not missing very many of these headshots. Yeah, Forgotten might be playing for picks here. If he stays on the Widowmaker coming out of the spawn door, look for that headshot right away. He knows someone might be vulnerable on that high ground. Shields might go down and they might be vulnerable. I don't know. This man can just hit a pin needle with his mouse. It seems like he has been lights out. I'd be scared. Northwood on defense. I like their composition. They've got Boat on the Tracer. That'll give them some contest if members go down. But Dynasty on the Hanzo is going to have to find so much value every single time he shoots an arrow. Yeah, Forgotten looking like they're switching right back to Ash. And Faded for a minute there, thought was going to play the Zarya, but switched back to the Orisa. They are going to be running the double shield as they're pushing in. We're seeing a much uh, more simplistic hold coming out from Northwood. Bay State prior was on the high ground and then rotated back to Hotel Northwood, just opting to take point and holding their ground. Dynasty finding the first pick on Abs. That is going to be Bay State backing up and recognizing they cannot push now. But most of their team was in position, so now they're in a very, very comparable position. Dynasty trying to get a couple of extra picks and keep this stagger up. It's already been about a minute in Bay State having a hard time finding their footing on their first push. 
Dynasty has been nasty on that first push, but it's going to be very hard to do that for three more minutes to shut down and attack almost all on your own with a headshot after headshot. But they state coming in. They've got to find a way to just get up on the high ground where Cabe is right now. That's the angle they need. Their sniper forgotten to just do his most dangerous work. Pressured now. Another headshot from Dynasty. That's what this team needs. The Flux, mm, the Dragon. Disgusting for Northwood as they continue to hold. Yeah, that Dragon Flux, like I was saying earlier, I think Burger Bandit and Dynasty was trying to get that play off on Blizzard World, but it never quite came to fruition. And now we're seeing it here on Hollywood, and it's working exceptionally well for them. Heck, Bay State might not even be able to take this first point and get this payload off the ground. And Nuke, again, I gotta bring up, this is best of five, Activision, mm. or Activision Blizzard Collegiate is best of three. That was a 2-1 win for Bay State, but this is a gauntlet we've got here. Oh no. Bay State, they're able to pulse bomb down the Supercharger and the Immortality Field. kiwami has got some space for the Scravitic Flux, Ooh. slams them down, and Bay State are looking Ooh. to come away with this first point but they've got to play the long game here and make sure they deal with every single member of Northwood because you cannot leave a contest standing. Kiwami, ooh, ooh with the Gravitic Flux. That was absolutely massive for Bay State. Finding both the Supercharger and the Immortality Field along with two kills. I can't, you know, I couldn't find more value at a Dollar General. That was absolutely beautiful from kiwami and and carrying the weight base state needed to get that first point and start this push they now have four minutes left to round this corner and make it to where northwood did and they do have this sort of pace on their side yeah, my man Kiwami right there, he saw the supercharger and the mortality field go down and my man was looking for yellow stickers trying to find those clearance deals with that Gravitic Flux mm -hmm. and he came away just stacked in coats in designer, <laughs> the first point Gucci. had it all going for him. Gucci, exactly. The Gucci slides. My man was absolutely <laughs> dripping coming away from that first point. But now this one heavily contested as the streets phase have just been so detrimental. Both teams just trying to fight on the low ground. We almost always see it up on the high grounds of these buildings, but a very rare low ground fight as it is just building wars here on Hollywood. These teams fighting in this Western studio. Oh, and we are going to see the amplification matrix come out from Land and Dragons coming out from Dynasty, trying to pair one with the other base state, recognizing real and backing up. Hold on. Let's just take a second. Hold up. Forgotten is on Hanzo. Forgotten switched over to Hanzo and is now 1v1ing Dynasty in that Hanzo duel. Cabe trying to get the... Uh, oh, no, wait, they didn't touch. What? Base state wins. That's they were not payload. No, no! Oh, wow! I didn't even realize they weren't on payload! The time was ticking to the end, and they weren't there. Northwood falling 3-1 to one is base state. Get, kept it on? Wow! Wow! Nuke, I am stunned. I don't want to call that a C9 because ultimates were flying like crazy and the pressure was on Northwood and there was really nowhere to stand. But I'm going to be honest, I thought we were going five maps. Northwood was just starting to play some of their best Overwatch. They're on Watchpoint Gibraltar and again on Hollywood, their defense, Dynasty on Hanzo doing his job to perfection. But at the end, you got to be on the dance floor if you want to stay in the marathon and they stepped off, they took a breather, and that's all she wrote. <laughs> Absolutely. And I mean, what a great set nonetheless. Bay State taking this one 3-1 and solidifying their dominance over Northwood now a second time this year. If I'm Northwood, I'm I'm getting uh I'm getting invigorated from this set. And I, I know that they're probably kicking themselves a little bit, but it comes down to the minute details, and that's what it came down to tonight. Yeah, Nuke. It's that time. It's very difficult to choose from. But if you had a player of the match tonight, who would you give it to? There's so many names that come to mind tonight. <laughs> Man, this is tough because this was a good series. It was so back and forth. I'm going to have to go. 
unfortunately, this series, it went to Bay State. I have to go with who I felt gave the most value throughout the entire set, and that's got to be forgotten. I mean, we were skeptical at first taking Depresso out of that first round and subbing in Forgotten, but definitely proved the reward for the risk in subbing them in and maintained a powerhouse throughout the rest of the set. Yeah, that's that's my pick too. I mean, just the flex DPS depth that Bay State has to sub out the Presso, who, again, if you weren't watching, he won them Li Zhang with an echo copy onto a diva that got him a 3K in overtime. And then Bay State goes, you know what? I'm trusting Forgotten off the bench to just have some fire in the mouse. And on Ash all night long, this guy was just almost unstoppable. Dynasty, a Grandmaster Tracer going toe-to-toe with him and forgotten time and time again. One-click headshot to answer the Northwood DPS. Yeah, my player of the game as well. Did you have any honorable mentions that you wanted to shout out? Oh, yeah. I mean, throughout the entire set, I felt like... Uh, a majority of Bay State had a lot of value. Kiwami on that final point was just crazy. Faded on the Winston uh, was absolutely nutty on watch point Gibraltar. Uh, abs uh, provided value the entire set, keeping the team alive. Now, if I were to give it a, a player of the match on the side of Northwood, if we're looking at the Northwood roster... Probably got to give it to Landon, if I'm honest. Again, Landon did a, a great job of staying alive a lot of these fights uh, throughout the amplification matrix uh, first in almost all of these fights and was adding a lot of value to Northwood. I, either them or Boat would probably be my toss-up. How about you? Yeah, on the side of Northwood, I would probably have to say Landon. It's almost his team at this point. They've lost a couple members in the offseason between uh, fall and spring semester, so the two-time champ from the fall is in a little bit of a rebuild phase, so we could see their level of competition get upped and upped as we enter the latter half of the season. It looks like they're learning how to fix their mistakes, and until tonight, they were undefeated even in a rebuild phase. So this team is one you want to watch out for. Nuke, our next mm -hmm. game up, again, going to be very good. Mm -hmm. Who do we got? We're going over to the champion Cyan division, and we're going to watch the Ottawa Braves out of Kansas take on CSUDH, California State University, Dominguez Hills. It will be a set for the record. Ottawa Braves currently sitting 4-0, and CSUDH has a record of 3-2. Stay tuned, grab some popcorn, use the bathroom, and we'll be right back with the next set.
Howdy, folks. I'm Chase Nuclear Nukem, joined tonight by Berkeley Alt Charge Stevens. There's been some deliberation behind the cast, but we are now here for the Ottawa Braves versus CSU DH Toro set. Now, there was some stuff going on behind the scenes, so Ottawa Braves will start the series up 1 0, and we will immediately be moving into the first map, which will be Blizzard World now. We will be skipping Li Zhang Tower on control, going straight into Blizzard World. And man, we have a series ahead of you. Ottawa Braves now 4 0 so far this season, CSUDH 3 2. And I think really the main contentious point that we've been talking about, Alt Charge, is MSOE Black, right? Ottawa, Ottawa Braves took them out 3-0 in the first week and just last week CSUDH lost 0-3 to them yeah Nuke there's a little bit of a difference in what that MSOE black team is compared to week one and just recently last week so it's not the best indicator we've got but it is the best indicator we've got and also that Li Zhang map goes the way of Ottawa because of CSUDH just showing up a little late to this match here as it is 11 28 and we're just getting started so that's why they were docked that Li Zhang map. Ottawa, that's a good sign for them. This team was on time. They showed up to play. They were just given a one map advantage. They could make this one pretty quick tonight if CSU DH doesn't have their wits about them because they're scrambling with their roster right now. And that's a dangerous look going up against an undefeated team. Absolutely. I believe they thought that they had a player on the roster. However, there were some issues. Uh, the ro player was actually not on the roster. And as we're actually seeing in chat as well, there's a big storm going on uh, on the side of CSU DH saying that it's spooky. Oh, sorry. No, that's actually Ottawa saying that there's a storm going on. Uh, and, and maybe they're bringing the thunder. Maybe that's it. Maybe. I am looking to see it because I know Lump on this Echo is pretty thunderous coming in with all sorts of cooldowns. A rather hard projectile hero to actually hit your mark with aside from that one beam ability that's almost a free kill at half HP. But Lump is just kind of known for hitting that primary and sticking those stickies. He's got a lot of glue on those cooldowns, so I'm looking for him to be the main impact for this auto team. On the side of CSU DH, they're running numbers on this May. I like that. I think that's going to get them a lot of bonus time where they can cycle cooldowns with this double barrier composition, and that should be key for them tonight. But going in here, auto Braves quick to the first corner, but it looks like Sunsinger having a tough time getting that angle on Soldier 76, and CSU DH pushed back around a corner as well, giving up some ground here, but they've still got a rotation to this boat high ground that they can use anytime. Yeah, numbers trying to throw out a wall, allowing their team some move to get back in. Danny actually finding a pick as well, leaving Ottawa a bit on the back foot. CSU DH doing a great job of holding. And I think exactly what you said, uh, Berkeley, it's going to come straight down to the DPS because uh, on either side, we've got quite a variety of DPS coming out. And Danny doing a great job, I think, by CSU DH securing that first point for them, taking out the back line when necessary in Ottawa now having to regroup attack as a full unit we are going to see both amplification matrixes are up on night fury and simplistic so whoever is able to find more value on the side of the dps pushing into this fight will take it i love that little halt pull combo we saw there from tyro but it's going to be the halt Very pull combo from danny and maelstrom wow. that pays its dividends as the Pulse Bomb finds two on the back of that Orisa Halt, and that is great combination there from the Tracer and Orisa player on the side of CSUDH. The Toros are looking good here. I mean, I know I was saying Ottawa came to play, but CSUDH, they've got a little bit of a shaken up lineup. It's working very well for them so far. Yeah, maybe they're the ones bringing the storm, if, if, I, if I'm honest. Uh, I, I think these uh, pool combos are where you find a lot of value out of these Orisa comps, especially being able to time those perfectly. I mean, we saw Lump do that pretty easily with Tyrell, but the clap back from Maelstrom, speaking of the clap back, we are going to see the Supercharger popped with the Amplification Matrix. That's a deadly combo for CSU DH. Ottawa doing a great job of just holding back, recognizing it's not quite time to push, but here the time.
time comes now finding two we are going to see the tactical visor popped as will be the gravitic flux on the side of csudh trying to find a pick they will find it in the form of lump cheshire cat taking them out danny getting the pulse bomb over on sung singer but it's going to be responded by not sir taking out three members of csudh a great push there from the Braves as they're able to finally trump the Toros on the first point of Blizzard World. That's going to shake up the Toros composition a little bit as Danny swaps off the Tracer and puts on the Cole Cassidy. Getting those cowboy boots on for the second point as the high ground is so important. You would love to rain in some lead from over the heads of the Braves. But Nuke, in our last game that we casted Northwood against Bay State, this high ground was so heavily contested throughout the entire match on both sides, both rounds, that it was really neither team really ever getting the second point. I know that Bay State did actually get the payload farther, but we never actually saw the second point completely captured, and that is in large part of just how this defensive high ground can really just be way overpowered if you're playing those shields and angles properly. It's exactly like you said, it's what we saw in the match prior between Northwood and Bay State. The fight over this high ground was consistent and Ottawa keeping that consistency up as they are just raining fire on CSU DH on this push and looking very, very strong, finding a couple of picks, which is going to stagger the Toros. The Toros just trying to make a stand here as they get back in. Not sir. Pops that cryptic flux, but the high noon from Danny. That's why you put on the Cole Cassidy right there to perfectly counter that tank ultimate. And now it looks like the Braves, even though they were mounting a good attack from a very strong position, will be thwarted away by the Toros. Yeah, the Toros doing a great job of now getting back in here and not utilizing all the resources necessary. That's going to be detrimental for Ottawa, who now has all of their ultimates down. If CSU DH can capitalize here and get a pick, they might be able to push the Braves back and cower in fear. Braves working with a minute 45 here to get this second point, and they've got no alt economy to work with right now. They're looking at an economy fight in front of them as the Toros are working on five ultimates on the board. CSU DH, they have really brought this first round together here as they're opening up so strong. If they just use these ultimates wisely and don't overinvest in this fight, they should have the resources to just end this game very early in this second round Ooh. or in the second part of the map. Yeah, but CSUDH investing two ultimates is going to be a, a, a very good investment, taking out all of the members of Ottawa. Ottawa now building up all of their alt charge, but just like your namesake, they're all going to come up online around the same time. So I almost predict that they're going to get really close to getting this payload on. They're going to get all of their ultimates online, and then they're just going to blow them on CSUDH, who will only have you know two or three online at the time yeah and that is kind of the key to overwatch is make sure you have the ultimates as overtime is about to transpire because you don't want to be in the final fight situation with nothing to burn and right now the toros are just looking to defend this fight with 30 seconds to go but they can't find any picks the ottawa braves are going to throw the kitchen sink at them to take away this high ground and it's going to start with that ant matrix by simplistic but i love it just constant investments we're seeing by the toros just to amp up damage time after time here. Danny almost able to get that pick onto Lump, but doesn't quite find the mark. And now we have Cat popping the Transcendence, keeping everyone on the Taros alive as time ticks down. It looks like the Braves just don't have this second point in the bag. Ooh, and a very late Dragon Strike coming out, trying to find anything, but the Taros will hold the Braves halfway under the bridge after the first point. And Almost to, to a bit of surprise, the Braves were really pushing their advantage there uh, for quite a minute. Toros just did a great job of locking them down and catching them off pace. But this is a CSU DH that we've seen before. We've seen Danny, Maelstrom, uh, I think those two specifically dominate the NECC. And I would expect nothing less. Yeah, I mean, especially Danny on DPS has been around for a couple semesters here and he knows the level of competition that's at play in this champions division. He knows that he is one of the more elite DPS in this division, and he's totally fine flexing onto a number of heroes that have a very high skill floor, like Tracer, like the Cole Cassidy, where you have to execute. You've got to hit those shots or play with a very low HP pool, like on Tracer. And 
He's not afraid to just dive into the back line, duel out DPS on the other team. He doesn't care if the other team is like the Ottawa Braves here that's coming into this game undefeated. He will take on all challengers. I mean, that's, that's Danny for you. And Danny switching over to the Cole Cassidy as well. Uh, this hit scan is just insane. We'll see how Lump can handle it. Same as Sun, Sun Singer. Ottawa Braves have quite a hold ahead of them. They're going to have to pitch the tent and get some cement bricks down because CSU DH, these Toros are going to come out bulking and banging. And the Toros looking like they're going to be going bottom left here, just using the natural cover of the long walk. On the way to the first objective of Blizzard World to just make sure they don't have to use their tank cooldowns on their way in. But I love this Braves defense just playing the strong angle where they can deal so much damage into that first doorway. But it looks like we'll hop down from the high ground with a quick rotation over to point and play rather standard here following that first engagement. Not Sir struggling with his HP here. Simplistic having to throw that immortality field out just to keep his off tank alive there. And the Braves get the first pick of the fight with that kill on the cap, but Simplistic goes down, quickly trading 1v1, but it looks like this fight is evened up. Five members of Beast, the Toros, playing some tempo, trying to collect themselves as the Braves go for a mid flank, but it comes up empty in terms of eliminations. And now Sunsinger got the Bob online, able to get that kill onto Danny. Ooh. That's the previous carry down, but the Toros not phased by it. They come back in with two quick kills, and they would love to come away with the objective. Yeah, I mean, and we already know that the res is down. We are going to see Toki fall. Ottawa Braves now stuck on the back foot, but still holding this point. Maelstrom taking out Tyrell, and it looks like the cap is almost imminent. That was a great push from CSUDH, utilizing what they had at their disposal. Actually, the Bob is going to come out from Sunsinger in the final moments. Wiki Tricks now stuck, and man, that is a very low Cheshire Cat. I almost feel like they're not targeting the right target at the time, and payload will fall as Bob falls uh, on on. Sorry, the point will fall as Bob dies, and it will be on the Toros end to continue this push up. The Braves now stuck once again on their back foot and uh in a comparable position as csu dh has three ultimates at their disposal three ultimates and four and a half minutes to push this payload a hundred meters down the second point high ground again going to be the thing that both teams do battle over this payload is on the back burner of everyone's mind as you've got to win the fight here first and the toros come away with it now they're in great position here to get the final 50 meters and I think that's exactly what they're going to do. The Toros clapping back, getting one on the map. I mean, Ottawa is going to have to come back with a massive hold here. And maybe the storm is affecting them more than what they thought. I thought that they had the advantage going into the set, but man, oh man, CSU DH is bringing the fire. And the Braves have nothing to use here in terms of ultimates, and there will not even be a touch CSU DH even this series up the forfeit on map one doesn't phase them and now after blizzard world we've got a score of one to one yeah and uh i think a, a very uh deserved map one for the toros they played this exceptionally well i mean look at that graphitic flux keeping them all underneath that building but getting all of that damage out not sir is uh you know, it's keeping the namesake. Don't don't call me sir, because I'm, I'm here to get in your face and I'm here to do what I can to stop you. This is a this is a very powerful Toro that we're seeing in front of us. And Nuke, going on to our next map, Watch Point Gibraltar. We saw a couple of crazy compositions, a couple of different takes in our Legends Division game. We just saw it was a Winston double bubble composition going up mm -hmm. against the Northwood Orisa Diva bunker composition. But mm -hmm. I think both of these teams are very comfortable playing double shield. And that's one of the more versatile comps in Overwatch where you can almost get away with that on every map. Do we see a different look here? Or do you think tonight we're just going to see a whole lot of double shield? I, I could see a lot of dive coming out in this map, especially with how the Braves are trying to play. It sounds like they're, Lord, not sounds, it looks like they're trying to be exceptionally aggressive, but they just keep getting shut down. So what I can see come out is a, a dive composition from the Braves and maybe a double bubble composition, uh, or maybe not even double bubble, prob probably double shield composition coming out from CSU DH as we head into this map three. Like you said, it will be Watchpoint Gibraltar and 
anything's on the table at this point. I mean, it's one to one in the series. Ottawa came out that first push very, very strong on Blizzard World, but it did not carry them. Uh, we also will be letting you know that we are switching sides for these teams, so they will be on the opposite ends now. Yeah, that's going to mean that the Braves will attack first here. They'll be tasked with putting the pressure on CSUDH despite a pretty lackluster Blizzard World for this undefeated team. They haven't dropped many maps this entire season, so to start a game that way, I know it is map number two, but we didn't play number one, so really to start a game mm -hmm. that way, dropping a map to... The Toros, especially where the map didn't even have to be fully completed, might actually put the Braves in a tough spot. That was the first map they've dropped all season long. So wow. anytime you're in that situation where you're playing a game that you're no longer used to and you're playing from behind for the first time all year, again, I know it's even, but you're playing where you have not won a map and the other team has won a map for the first time this season, it could be pretty difficult. You might be second-guessing yourself. We'll see how they respond after a short break. We'll be right back with Watchpoint Gibraltar. And we're back with more NECC Overwatch action. We told you it'd be a short break. We don't got enough time for this, right? It's 11.44. We're ready to get these matches underway. Ottawa's got a storm coming, and this series has got to continue. We are heading towards Watchpoint Gibraltar, the next map in the set. And anything is possible from either of these rosters. Seeing a lot of flexibility on all sides, and truthfully, I think that the Toros could come back to take this series. Yeah, the Toros are looking pretty fierce. That forfeit in map number one definitely didn't phase them one bit, and I feel like it would for a lot of teams. It's kind of hard to come into a game where your starter doesn't show up. You have to put in a substitute. You don't know how things are going to go because it's not usually what you're scrimming with. It's not usually what you're trying to prepare for your match with, but They've come in and they have clicked, and that is all they could hope for, especially coming away with that Blizzard World win. Being on attack first here, it looks like both teams are going to be running at least some variation of dive. The Toros might not stick on these exact heroes out of the spawn doors, but the Braves will have this exact look. And this is the look that I believe Base State was trying to attack and defend this map with, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. It, it... It's very similar, at least. The the Winston has a lot of value in these maps. There's a lot of small corridors and a lot of vertical capability to get up and down out of these uh, hallways and, and, and in and around. It's just good for good old monkey. I'm going to see CSUDH pushing first. Now on the red side, Ottawa Braves on the blue. They're going to hold up a little bit further in on this uh, bridge. Sleep will come off. And Ottawa Braves looking to hold. Sunsinger could be in some trouble here as it looks like Danny 
has a target on the back of the ash for the Ottawa Braves. He's identified that Simplistic and Sunsinger are definitely the most diveable targets on that squad, but the Toros are just kind of jostling for space here, exchanging some pleasantries with the Braves, who did something we didn't really see too much of in our last game in the Legends Division, which is contesting the payload here. In the last game, at the highest ranks of the NECC, the payload was not contested until the very end of this point. So we'll see if this actually pays off for the defense, but it looks like that could actually leave some members up on the high ground a little more vulnerable than they might be otherwise. Lump goes down, a great shuriken swipe takes care of him, but at the same time, numbers falls to the hit scan Sunsinger. Right now, it's still anyone's fight. Danny falls there to Tokyo. as she is able to clean up the Genji, and we've got ourselves a five versus four here favoring the defense as Tyrell goes bouncing into the back line with a Nano Boost and Primal Rage, just trying to batter around this Toro's team and show them who's boss. And right now, Tyrell coming out on top. Yeah, Tyrell wiping the smile off of Cheshire Cat and keeping the rest of the Toros, or keeping the rest of the Braves uh, split and pushed back. Now it's CSUDH coming out on top, pushing out under this bridge. Danny doing a lot of value for CSUDH, keeping the Toros alive. That's going to be the Brigette rally popped, trying to keep Simplistic alive in the back line, and it's going to work. What a what a combo coming out from Lump as well. Sunsinger not letting the action happen without them getting a pick onto Wiki Tricks and pushing CSUD. DH back. We're finally seeing the Ottawa Braves kind of find their footing in the series. And that was elite game sense we were seeing right there by Toki. She knew exactly when her tanks were coming back out of spawn. She knew to keep Simplistic and herself alive there in that bunkered up mega room. Had to pop the rally and it was great. Ended up getting dove but it made no difference. Now we've got Danny going in with the Dragon Blade. No Nana required. Oh no, he is Nano. Look at that. I didn't even see it, but Night Fury did slap it on, and he was getting quite a lot of one hits. I was going to say, this Butterblade looks awfully sharp just finding one shot after a one shot, but did actually get the Nano boost there. But still, the Braves hanging in this fight. They're really bunkering up here well, and a lot of it is just due to this support point. Yeah, Simplistic and Toki keeping the back line alive, and we even saw the. Uh... We, we even saw Toki get the nano boost as well and pushing the Toros back. Seems like every time the Toros try to approach this right side, the Braves are waiting for them self-destruct coming out. Not going to quite find anyone, but the Braves finding picks left and right. Lump on this tracer is causing a havoc for CSU DH. This map definitely favoring the Braves so far, and they were undefeated running mainly these dive compositions, so... It seems like their tanks are far more comfortable on this than the double shield where those cooldowns are kind of hard to micro as much as the cooldowns on dive might be or the focus fire of a team that is an elite undefeated team against a team that might struggle a little bit more with communication. But now we've got the double dive going in as numbers copies the Winston. And right now it is just a zoo in this mega health pack room. There are three Ooh. monkeys trapped in this cage <laughs> and we've still got an even fight. Oki goes down and that is both supports for the Braves taken care of. Now it's going to be awfully hard for them to stagger this point, but the DPS doing all in their power as they find Ooh. two kills, but Danny, Trying to put an end to it here, slicing down Sir, Ooh. taking care of Lump as well. As overtime ticks down, it should be the Toros. Yeah, that was a clutch play from Danny, keeping the Toros alive. And I felt like the factor that would have turned the tides there was whether or not the pick on Lump came out, which it did. Lump unable to utilize the, the ultimate and keep Danny out. Danny staying on top for this time however they have two minutes to make it around this part of the map make it underneath of this plane the ship if you will it could be a, a, a daunting task we are going to see the pulse bomb dropped in the back line of CSUDH but it will not find anyone we're going to see the nano come out on Tyrell now sitting at around 300 health having to back into the back line and now taking apart three of the Toros the Toros are forced to regroup that is a value of this dive composition especially when they're trying to push in here you're able to take out the back parts you're able to take out the legs that's going to be all and they're going to topple over and this is one of the hardest parts of Overwatch at least in terms of escort maps you don't have very big doorways to get out of, and 
It is so easy to focus fire damage through these chokes that you've got to push through as the attackers. And these high grounds themselves, even though they're high grounds, they're not the highest of high grounds as we see the brave set up on the ship. They're still attacking from above here. Completely relentless in their efforts and they'll come away with the kill onto Maelstrom and Danny Numbers. Playing with some low HP, but he'll get fueled right back up by Night Fury. And it looks like the Toros are looking to go again quick here, but they've only got a minute to work with, so they've got to make it snappy. Seems like Ottawa taking the strategy up, turning up the Bunsen burner, and the fire is coming out as we're seeing a new pace come from this team. Ottawa doing a much better job in this map of keeping CSU DH at bay, but man, Danny's got these clutch factor plays, as does Maelstrom. This could be a CDS UDH series if the Braves cannot keep that down. Man, I, I think it could go either way at this point, but we are seeing a great showing from both of these teams. I, I think I speak for both of us when I say a much better showing than what we had anticipated. Yeah, CSU DH really living up to oh. expectations here, exceeding them, if you will, as they find two kills to open up this fight as Toki and Sunsinger go down, now trying to close in on Simplistic, but Simplistic somehow able to make it out of that ship with their life. Lump also getting the D-Mech there onto Wikitrix, taking the D.Va out of the suit. Tyrell gets the Nano Boost thrown onto him, but not able to do too much with it right now Ooh. as he's finding a pretty difficult time jumping in. And now Numbers again, throwing the copy onto the Winston, the Wrecking Ball, the D.Va, and the Winston all diving in simultaneously, but it might not be enough here for the Toros as they've got three left standing and a few meters to go here for second point. Well, they just got four as they got Maelstrom back in the fight. The rally is going to get popped by Toki, and they're going to make a final effort on this payload. Maelstrom trying to get a couple of uh, rotations around Lump will fall to a headshot by Danny. Once again, these clutch factor plays are exactly what I was talking about earlier. Tokyo getting the pick on Cheshire Cat. Smiling no longer. Wiki tricks finding simplistic. It's so back and forth. Tyrell finding numbers. Not Sir finding Danny. And it's now a, what is that, 4v2? Three now on point? Tyrell's gonna pop the Primal Rage, gonna get the D-Mech off on Wikitrix, and that could be all she wrote for OT. Wow, knocking back Maelstrom as they went for the charge down, the slam. What a play from Ottawa, and they will stop the Toros from advancing. Now they just need to reciprocate. And we had a great perspective there, thanks to our master observer, Carol. Zooming in there on Toki's play on the brig, using that shield bash not to stun, but to create space between them and the Toros, hitting whip shots to boop them away and keep her inspire her AOE healing ability procced the entire duration of that overtime fight. Toki might have played better than anyone in this lobby on that last round from what she was doing on first point, helping out Simplistic stay alive, bunkering up in that mega health pack room, and then right there in overtime, staying alive that entire time despite a relentless Toros dive. Toki right now, I know we're only two maps in, but outstanding play, probably the best out of anyone in this lobby. And that is, you know, coupled with what Danny did in mm -hmm. map number one. Uh, should we even talk about the chat message that just came out from Toki? No, Nuke, wait, it's, wait. it's it's too late for me to read, uh, and there was there was way too much there from Toki. Uh, oh, there it is again. Yeah, these uh these copy pastas are getting real saucy. Chat, you know, I need to know what you're going to do at a hog as a hog main at a respectably high helo. I you know I gotta know. Well, listen, Nuke. Personally, my favorite character is the Reaper guy. He's very powerful. Mm -hmm. Special move, honestly, mm -hmm. is one of the best in the game. And so he comes equipped with these two revolvers, and it only mm -hmm. takes about three or four shots to actually execute a kill. Production so it comes can in we really do? handy, especially when you come from the side. <laughs> uh, what? Are, why? Why am I here? What I is just, life? Uh, how how just did made I made production mute their mics? They couldn't take it. Making production mute their mics and making Danny smack the desk maybe a little bit. Tyrell getting the early pick out for the Ottawa Braves. Stopping Danny Sunsinger is going to find another one. And now they're going to find Night Fury. That's going to be a steamroll from the Braves. Stopping the Toros on this push. And man, oh man, they, they are flaunting it for sure. Yeah, the Toro's almost getting pushed back into their spawn here. Braves have to be careful not to overextend. They've got to keep this attack going around 
The final corner of point number one, Lump and Simplistic keeping the payload in drive. Hokey there now coupling with the efforts. Give the payload a little bit more speed here, but a contest comes in from the Tauros as Tyrell goes down to that anti nade from Night Fury. And Night Fury quickly slaps the nano boost onto Maelstrom, who goes in, guns ablaze in this Tesla cannon. Amped up. Yeah, that Tesla cannon going through the backline. Simplistic falling in a very difficult way. Not Sir. Now backing up. Self destruct will be on point, but. Probably wanting to save that one for good measure. Ottawa Braves now with almost six ultimates online. CSU DH almost has all of theirs as well. They are going to pop the self-destruct over the top. Another one will follow, but it will get stuck. The first self-destruct will take out Maelstrom, opening this fight up for the Ottawa Braves, trying to find anyone with the high noon. Unfortunately, we're three minutes right before midnight, and that's the opposite. Tyrell taking out Danny is they're trying to get that ultimate the primal rage coming out and pushing everyone off the payload numbers 94 percent to emp the hack will come off emp is online this could be the clutch factor needed to defend this point it doesn't look like it. it looks like numbers is instead going to back up probably a smart move not really much of a team to bank on or capitalize off of that emp and they're going to wait for another opportunity to use it yeah, Chase, an EMP right there would have been way too costly a mistake for numbers to make in what has been mm -hmm. a very close game so far, especially when the Braves are going to be pushing this payload on second point for four minutes. You've got to keep your alt economy in check. Numbers just kind of laying off the trigger there, as tempting as it might have looked. And right now, the Toros are down a couple of members. They've got to concede a lot of ground, and that EMP could actually be the clutch factor they need to get back in this defense. I think that it's going to be. I mean, they also have the nano boost online that could easily put that on Maelstrom, but before they're even able to, the visor's going to come down. Sunsinger trying to look for a pick, but instead going to fall. Maelstrom taking out both DPS on the side of the Ottawa Braves, forcing Tyrell to get a primal rage off. Unfortunately, most of the back line is pretty stuck right now. It doesn't matter, though, because the support and tank line working so cohesively on the side of the Ottawa Braves. They are going to try to push and get the Toros back. Toros responding in full. And man, Toki is out here swinging with the rocket flail. And Wiki Tricks out here throwing these bombs. Self-destruct going to find two just as Lump finds their way back into the fight. They will find themselves six feet under once again. Danny closing it out, getting a headshot on Sunsinger. This should be a reset from the Braves coming in. Yeah, and I'm not sure if the Braves actually meant to win that fight and capture the last bit of this map. I think they were just mm -hmm. investing there to try and make numbers throw in that EMP. They knew they had tracked that ultimate, and now they can go in with oh. the nano boosted Winston and not have any serious counters oh. to worry about. That's the Sombra and the Ana taken down here, now working on the Diva Mech of Wiki Tricks, but some good healing keeps Wiki Tricks in this fight for now, but still Tyrell. Is going loose in the back line. Finds the kill on the cat there with a little help from Lump. And it looks like the Ottawa Braves running away with Watch Point Gibraltar. Wow. You know, Berkeley, you've heard me say it time and time again. I want the sauce to be shown. But instead, Tyrell popping open a, popping open a fresh canister of peanut butter and popping it for the rest of the Ottawa Braves. Play of the game is going to go to Wiki Tricks on the Diva. More, more than likely, the self destruct play taking two on this defense, putting it out. Yeah, there's the headshot. The hack will come out. Pick one, self destruct, and there's two. Exactly what I had predicted. And now we see the Ottawa Braves now up 2 1 in this set, which we didn't play the map one, right? They, they had to give away that first map CSU DH did giving Ottawa a, a, a little bit of a lead. And now as we head into our fourth map in the series, there, this, this could be it for CSU, DH, and Ottawa Braves. This could be. I mean, Ottawa has a chance. They're on match point. They could steal it away. But again, I want to just go back to our Legends Division map, or yeah, map of Hollywood, where a lot of these teams, especially in Champions, they're looking at that division right above them at the highest rank and taking away what they can from the meta on each map. Both teams played double shield. I don't actually know if that's what Ottawa tries to do here. I think they just go at this one at least after first point with more of a full dive composition because I do think that they are the better dive v dive team right here. But I think 
if they go double shield and mirror that against the Toros, they could get themselves into trouble. Yeah. I, I mean, that's what we've seen before, right? That That's what we've seen in this series is we are heading into Hollywood. I think it, it could be very similar to watch point Gibraltar in terms of compositions. I mean, that's exactly what we talked about last time. We'll more than likely see some tracers, really good flank points coming out on Hollywood. And I, I, I would have to agree with you. I think the double shields will come out. Don't know if the Reinhardt will be played over the Orisa. Orisa has just been strong, and we've seen a lot of synergies with the pools on both teams. We saw that back in Blizzard World. So it could be a case of you know them looking to make plays off of the Orisa specifically. Both teams' Orisas are very strong, so could happen. Also, we will be switching sides. Yeah, that's going to mean that the Braves will be attacking first here. I do like that for them, especially after getting some momentum there on watch point. Gibraltar able to complete as much of the map as they needed to get the win, and now they'll have the chance to keep their foot on the gas pedal here on Hollywood. They're looking for a big time bank. This is a send a message round. This is where you have the chance to get into the heads of the Toros as they've now got their back up against the wall tonight. If they come away completing the map with a time bank, that could really cause a lot of trouble for the Toros. But I, but I mean, what does a Toro do when it when it seems cornered? Puts its horns down and goes buck wild. Exactly. If you can't stand or don't poke the bull with the horn. Yeah, that, that's it. That's what we say in Indiana for sure. Don't question it. Um, I'm sorry, chat. You know, it just hit uh, midnight 03 and you're now here in NECC at night. <laughs> After dark. After dark. We have managed to bring our Thursday cast into Friday. And TGI Friday, that means sleep is right around the corner for the two of us. You won't have to deal with our cheesy little jokes for much longer. But you will have to deal with a little bit more Overwatch as Hollywood is about to be underway here. The teams are ready to rumble, and so are we. We'll be going into studio mode here on Hollywood to... Hopefully catch a little bit of a show and they make what could be match point. Very interesting. I think it will be. Uh, Hollywood has been kind of one of the, 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 the outcasts all night. One of the outliers. That's the word I'm looking for. It's been an outlier all evening. And I don't even think, not, I don't even, we haven't seen the end of this point since we've been on cast, they have stopped halfway, which as you get higher up in the Overwatch divisions, the defense gets a lot stronger. It's not just offense heavy. And I think that that's what we've seen a lot of tonight with uh, most of these hybrid and escort maps not even finishing. Yeah, a lot of tonight has just been the story of stellar defense on these maps, really playing them properly. And you're right, I don't think we've seen a single payload or hybrid map completed except for when Northwood was able to cap three points of Gibraltar. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's been this, uh, the, the same rhetoric all night of don't let that cart move. And it's also been the same rhetoric of, um, you know, if, if you want to learn hog PM me, I'm gold 2300. And I also do coaching. Yeah, and Roadhog's Hook is one of the hardest skills to master. You have to predict speed, trajectory, momentum, and velocity, as well as healing mm -hmm. yourself and tanking. Roadhog has the highest skill ceiling. That's oh. another copy pasta if you oh, weren't yeah. aware. Oh, no. I, I mean, wait, that was a copy pasta? I thought that was just <laughs> yeah, I thought that was just you talking, spitting facts. Sun Singer, 6% before getting the recall off. Ottawa Braves, as we said earlier, now on the red. CSU DH in the blue. CSU DH defending Ottawa. Getting the high ground, not Sir. Getting a really good vantage point for the rest of the roster. Danny trying to get in a good position, get some headshots off. He's got Simplistic in the sights, but falling underneath half health. Going to have to fall down. Get some healing. Looks like Wiki Trick's gonna get the first pick out onto Toki. And we're gonna see CSU DH backing up a little bit as the Braves try to get in advance and find some value. Yeah, the Toro's in some trouble here, but they haven't given up the first tick as it looks like the Braves are just edging closer and closer to progressing on this point. They've finally taken down Wiki Tricks, the Sigma, and that is one barrier of the two missing now. The stick lands on the Maelstrom, but Sunsinger goes down in his efforts, but Maelstrom will eventually fall to that insane damage coming from Ooh. the pulse bomb and the slam now from Tyrell. The tanks for the Braves taking over. 
and they're looking to take point number one. Yeah, the tanks just having so much value. I don't know. Tyrell has done so much for this Braves team, and I felt like, especially in a role like tank, you need a little bit of time to come online, and that's what we've seen so far in this series, is these tanks get their footing more and more every map. Now, I am a huge fan of Tyrell on this Wrecking Ball. I think it can cause a lot of havoc in the back line. If you can render Cheshire Cat useless, that's going to be a massive detriment to the CSU DH Tauros. And, Nuke, I'm not going to lie. My favorite alt combo in the entire game of Overwatch is the Flux Minefield. You just slam them down into those Wrecking Ball mines. There's nothing more satisfying than that ground firework show, but we didn't see it right there as Sir... Popped the flux and Tyrell did not swing through with the mines, but it looks like the Braves, despite mm -hmm. losing the first couple of members initially, they will invest EMP and try to keep this fight going. Sir steps into two more kills, but Danny trying to stop the show here takes down Toki, one of the lights out players for the Braves, but still the payload moves. The payload continually moves. Payload, payload never changes. Danny. Danny never also changes, getting a Storm Arrow hit on Sunsinger. You think that Storm Arrow is powered by the fact they got a storm going on outside? It's got to be, right? Probably. It probably doesn't hurt. <laughs> Add in the buff that it got. I don't know. It, it seemed like it once. hurt pretty bad. I don't know. It arrows. seemed like it hurt pretty oh. bad. It definitely hurt. I love this use of the minefield here. Just sealing off that door. This should actually just get them the second point as Wikitrix numbers and it looks like maelstrom is short-lived but gets some great support there by night fury to stay alive but still just unable to ever get out of these doorways comfortably as sir and tyrell just completely shut the door on the toro's attempt at contesting wow and uh the braves now with with, with the with the awesome push i mean four minutes and 34 seconds left on the clock they pushed to that second point like it was nothing like it was uh pushing a, a wagon down the street and that's what i'm calling the payload from now on big fish is wagon <laughs> i was wondering if you're gonna bring out the big fish reference that no one is gonna understand but you <laughs> but i'm glad it I'm glad it makes an appearance here you know I have to. You know I have to. Uh, if if you don't know, you should ask Alt Charge about his why why I call him Big Fish after this cast. Hit up his DM on Twitter. As Night Fury hits up Toki and gonna put a halt to the Ottawa Braves push. They do have three ultimates online though, so they could get a massive clap back. It all depends on who's alt tracking and how effective they're doing at it. Because CSU DH only has two online. They will have Transcendence here pretty soon. Night Fury now finding the pick on not sir and that's going to be the ottawa way braves backing up recognizing all right we're down two we just need to regroup and the toros can't give up too much space here for free as if the braves get any closer that is the go signal for lump to just use this emp to end the game i know that the toros have the transcendence but cat is going to have a tough time getting that ultimate off when they're emp'd Axe come in, both supports go down for the Toros, but the payload is just far enough away where they should get a recontest here. And a couple of picks there from Danny Makin. Three should actually put a stop to this attack. Yeah, well actually Sunsinger also finding a pulse bomb. Tyrell getting a kill on Maelstrom as well. Number finding the headshot on Sunsinger may put a halt to it though. But look at the look at the ultimate charge on Ottawa Braves, right? They got four ultimates online. CSU DH maybe have four in the next ten seconds. So if the Braves are able to push their advantage here, open up with some ultimates, this could be huge. As I say that, the rally will get popped. So will the EMP and the Gravitic Flux. Gravitic Flux finding Tyrell. Never mind, that will actually be Night Fury. Maelstrom finding Toki and Ottawa Braves not finding any value, playing paying full MSRP price for all of these ultimates that they've used, and now they're back finding themselves at square one. Yeah, for the Braves, that is just a crucial miscalculation in terms of how they use those ultimates. No follow-up on that EMP and investing everything, even though there's two minutes left. The alt economy is now so far in the favor of the Toros that could have just cost them this third point. I think it will co cost them the third point. I mean, they, they're going to come back, but they at least have two more fights, right? They have the fight coming up where they have to build art to ult charge now. The Toros are going to use a lot of their ultimates. We're seeing the Gravitic Flux come online. We're seeing the Cole Cassidy High Noon as well as the Amplification Matrix trying to tear through the Braves. And it's actually only going to find one kill with... 
uh, Tyrell actually responding to wiki tricks. What Danny does here could be everything for this push. Dragon Strike going to come out separating the team, but 1.95 meters left. They are almost there. The push has almost gone through. They're going to pull up. Not Sir slamming down, and that's going to be it. They will make it with a minute and 22 seconds left. What a play from the Braves. Yeah, they rallied back so strong in that final fight to make it happen right at the end. They were on the welcome mat of the third point for a few moments there as the Toros tried to contest, but the Toros just didn't quite have enough in the tank to get back out there in the mix with the onslaught of ultimates that the Braves were throwing at them. And Nuke, they got it with over a minute. As we all know, in hybrid, that means if the Toros even complete the map, but there's no time on the clock, the Braves are the only ones who get a chance in overtime. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if CSU DH even pushes it all the way. The Braves have done an exceptionally good job of, uh, I, I don't even want to say finding value with their ultimates. They're just finding the picks that's needed. Now, obviously, you have Danny doing a great job, uh, was previously on that Hanzo. Now, switching over to the Tracer, I like Danny on the Tracer a little bit more. Generally a hit scan type player, but... Uh, making these clutch plays needed, and, and what what a better clutch character than good old mascot of Overwatch yourself, Tracer. Yeah, Danny got to be playing the cover girl here. He'll be tasked with getting more value than Lump on the side of the Braves. And the Braves setting up with a Sigma Wrecking Ball composition here on defense. That gives him a little bit of value with Sigma stabilizing with a shield for Sunsinger and the supports. And then Tyrell can actually go in simultaneously with Lump. And it looks like we've got almost mirror compositions, but Night Fury going to be on the Baptiste. Toki still staying on that brig. And like I've said previously, I think Toki is doing wonderful things on that hero. She is really playing at an exceeding level tonight for the Braves, making it so that team is just so enabled in such an extra way that she can really just make a final stand all on her own for this team. As long as anyone else is in the fight to just like turn some heads, Toki can just like put a stick in the mud and stay there forever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> that, that, that's been Toki this whole set, right? Uh, man, taking the high ground now, CSU DH, trying to get this offense out, but most of the team very, very low, and you know, when you only have a Baptiste and a Zenyatta, that healing is going to come very, very slow. The defense trying to just make a stand here in the coffee house. Danny comes in with a pulse bomb, but... Trades out there with Sun Singer. Right now it is an even five versus five, but the Braves lose Toki there, and now it's going to be very tough. Throwing around Harmony Orbs for Simplistic to keep the team alive, but luckily for them, Lump, Tyrell, and Sir come in with picks, and you won't have to worry about healing much more. Yeah, Sir, finding both picks as well. I mean, the Braves are doing a great job setting the pace on this defense. I don't think that the Toros are going to have much of a chance of making it through, but they may. I mean, they do have the amplification matrix online, actually, and Maelstrom almost has minefield. That could open up something, but you look on the side of Ottawa, they got simplistic transcendences online, and that could save the team in a tight spot. Both minefields actually coming out, and it's looking like it's snowing. Balls are everywhere on the field, and both teams trying to get to point. I love the transcendence usage there from Simplistic just to make sure that no chaos was caused amidst all of those wrecking ball mines. And now it's looking like the Toros are left with a minute 45 here to finally find this first point. But Nuke, like we we're saying, they've got a long way to go after it. They've got to complete this map with time, and that's not going to be very easy. No, I mean, they have a minute and 38 left on the clock to even capture this first point. They're going to start pushing through. Gravitic Flux will come online and bump a couple into it. Wiki Tricks with the high noon as well. CSU DH just coming out swinging, taking this first point. And uh, Ottawa Braves will fall. Pretty much everyone except for Simplistic and Lump who are now gone will not uh, be able to make this defense. So it looks like the Toros will take it with a little over a minute left on the clock. And that bumps their time bank up to three and a half here to get through streets phase and hopefully add an even greater time bank up there as they're going to need every minute of it to get themselves back in this map. But a great first point take for them with plenty of time. They had to make it happen then 
to give themselves a realistic chance at Hollywood, and now we'll have to fight through one of the more difficult chokes on this entire map, the opening gates of the streets phase. Yeah, and Sunsinger sitting here with the Bob now. Actually, I, I was going to predict it. Using it in this doorway is huge. They just have no way to get through this entrance, and it provides a lot of time. Bob sits there for a hot minute. The Ottawa Braves pushing this advantage, trying to get a lot of other ult charges online, and CSU DH is left picking up the pieces, sitting back in their spawn and waiting for the whole team to regroup. Now, they do have Night Fury's Amplification Matrix online again, but you take a look over at Ottawa Braves and they got three ultimates online. It just seems like the economy is just booming if you're a Brave. A Tyrell comes in with the minefield lump again, sticks another pulse bomb, and that will be an easy fight win for the Braves. They've chewed off a minute of this second point attack we're seeing from the Toros. And if they keep holding aggressively like this and making so much distance between where the payload is and where it needs to go on second, the Toros might have to use just all of this time bank to even get close to that objective. And then they might not be left with enough to take third, but the Braves definitely making this one very interesting, trying to keep it as close as possible. And the dive full throttle right now is simplistic and Tyrell go absolutely in oh, the discord God. on all the proper targets and Tyrell does not miss. I said they were bringing the thunder earlier, but it looks like the lightning has followed suit. Man, oh man, the Braves pushing this aggression all the way to the front door of the Toros. The opening gates, if you will. Speaking of opening, cracking open this fight will be the minefield coming out from Maelstrom. Going to get responded immediately from the Transcendence by Simplistic. We're going to see the Gravitic Flux come out, but get stunned out immediately. Not Sir responding with a Gravitic Flux of their own and turning the tide of this fight back in the favor of the Ottawa Braves taking down every single member of CSU DH. And it just seems like they are out pressuring CSU DH. Every time CSU DH goes to throw an ultimate out, the Braves have a response for it. And uh, when, when you have that sort of reactive play that's able to take out any proactive efforts, you're going to see a defensive win. And, and that's what we're seeing from the Braves right now. And with the Toros left with under a minute here to get this second point, it really does not seem realistic that they'll have enough of a time bank to make it to the end of the map in time. But their Ooh. composition switch is working wonders for them Ooh. as numbers swapping from the Casty to the Sombra cleans up the fight with three kills in the feed and they've got the payload and drive again. Wow, that was a, an insane flip of the script. And it's almost like we haven't seen very many switches come out from CSU DH so far um, on the attacking side. So watching numbers take a switch over to the sombra has done wonders so far for for how they've played i mean they just took out all of the members of the braves they weren't expecting a sombra by any means and now they're trying to push in we are going to see the minefield come out from maelstrom dropping it from the heavens danny getting a pick on toki and it looks like the toros are gonna push through the second point just as we saw the braves do not 10 minutes ago. It looks like the Braves trying to get on point. Pop in the minefield. Tyrell is going to get there, but will it push in time? It will not. And it looks like the Braves are now stuck on the back foot yet again. Like you said earlier, though, Berkeley, they only have a minute and 20 left on the clock. So CSU DH going to have to keep this momentum up. Yeah, they're in a tough spot here. They have to play mistake-free Overwatch for the rest of the round if they want a chance at overtime at all. Already losing in terms of time to the Braves, pretty significantly still very far away from the finish line of Hollywood. And I know they've got the ultimates to close out this round, but still you just have to keep this payload moving at maximum speed the entire duration of the round, or you're not going to have the chance you need. Yeah, and I mean, that's what we're seeing from Danny on this tracer. Now 10-0 left, Sunsinger uh, ending, ending the reign of Danny. Ottawa Braves now backing back up. Lump falling immediately. And we are going to see Gravitic Flux online from Not Sir. That'll probably get popped almost immediately. Trying to stop the Toros push. Yeah, the Toros are halted for now, but they've got the EMP ready to go. The payload might be able to make it there in the next 20 seconds, but I don't know. As time ticks away, it doesn't look like this one's going to make it with time on the clock. Numbers just poking around the back line waiting to pull the trigger on this EMP to catch Simplistic and Sunsinger in it. Simplistic, great reactions, able to get that Transcendence off. 
sensing that numbers decloaks and immediately presses Q. That'll keep the team alive for now, getting this one into overtime. And now it doesn't even matter if the Toros are able to get this objective. They won't have a chance in overtime as that EMP didn't find the value mm. in time. But still, the Toros are in this one. They could play for a draw, but the Braves are looking to end it here with a stellar final stand. They've got their backs against the wall on Hollywood, but it looks like Oof. just a couple of members left. The Toros might be able to edge out this final fight. Uh, trying to make a name for himself with a pulse wow. bomb, but eventually falls, and the Toros collect. The Toros do collect, indeed. The Braves, though, sitting with a minute and 22 still to utilize... Oh, feels bad making it back immediately to the fight with the minefield, not in the nick of time. Yeah, I mean, when you have one tank and two healers of life, alive, if those healers are able to synergize like we just saw, they're going to be able to take it. And that's exactly what the Toros found in that final fight. Now, I believe we're going to see the Braves pushing yet again as the Toros need to defend this first point. If the Braves get... I believe one tick that's all she wrote that is all she wrote and yeah with the braves on match point one tick is all you need to send both teams home and put smiles on the faces of everyone up there in ottawa rooting for the braves here and nuke this is one of the more easy points to defend in overwatch we haven't seen a lot of instant success found it usually takes building up some alt economy i'm not quite sure if the braves are going to have the performance they need with a minute and 22 seconds to take the first point because the Toros are playing good Overwatch tonight. And still, I feel like with their back up against the wall, they might have a little bit extra in the tank. Well, I think I, I think if we see, since we're seeing Sunsinger on the Soldier 76, they're going to go for an early tack visor. But once again, that's dependent on Sunsinger hitting these shots and getting this alt charge up. They have about a minute to do it, which is pretty tough. But, I mean, you have to consider they're going to probably be touching point. They got a couple of fights that they're able to push out. It's all going to come down to picks in this micro play. As we're seeing a lot of the Braves try to wrap around the outside. Sir going to take the high ground. Finding a couple of players behind him. Trying to get a rock off on this Tracer. Danny, though, elusive as ever. Popping onto the ground yet again. Cheshire Cat finding the pick on Lump. Danny and Maelstrom following suit. The Braves did get a little bit of ult charge, but CSU DH definitely found a lot more value. Danny, 70% now to this Pulse Bomb. And this is going to be detrimental for the Braves. They have to back up and get it together. Get back on point if they want to see this series end here. Otherwise, we will be heading into another map and the Toros will have tied up the series. Or, I guess, tied up this map. <laughs> And they've got three quarters of the time here killed in overtime. Danny on the flank has the pulse bomb, tries to stick it. Simplistic and Sunsinger both go down, and that should be a wrap here on Hollywood. The Toros seem to have this one in the bag. The Braves have no ultimates to work with as the final five seconds of this just kind of spill out over the point as Tyrell is still left to be dealt with. But short work made for the Toros as they tie up Hollywood, and that will send us on our way to map five, Ilios. Yeah, they will draw on this map. Now, the next map will be control. What's interesting here is this is going to actually be the first control map of the entire series as we did skip the first map. Toros were able to keep this one out to a tie, and the Braves were not able to clutch it out quite in time. I mean, a minute and 22 seconds left is a pretty big ask. We're seeing the Scravitic Flux come out from Wiki Tricks, which will get the play of the game on Hollywood. Well, Nuke. Going into Ilios, we haven't seen any control played so far, but what we have seen is the Ottawa Braves lose the only, well, they didn't really lose Hollywood, but drop the only two map wins they could have had to a team this season. So it looks like the Toros are going toe to toe with the big dogs right now, which is a great sign for their program, especially more than halfway through our semester of Overwatch. So going into the playoffs, if you're the Braves, if you remain undefeated after tonight, you're probably hoping you don't meet this team in the playoffs, correct? Oh, I mean, 100%. You 100% you want to avoid this team while in any official competition. Now, I mean, in terms of scrims, this is a pretty close set. They could find a really good scrim partner in each other. 
But like you said, this is regular season and moving into playoffs. If they see each other round one, that could spell the end of the season for either of these rosters. Is this has been an incredibly close set. And I'm still really proud of how the Toros have played tonight. Again, kind of just shocking the Braves coming in late to the game, forfeiting map number one and making a good series out of this last game of the night, especially late at night like it is coming in. Everyone's probably a little bit burnt out already. Nuke, I know you and I both are struggling to keep our eyes open, but these players, they're hitting shots. They're out there. They're grinding. They're making a series of it. So pretty good that we're seeing some good Overwatch played this late at night. On to Ilios. We've talked about compositions a lot tonight. This is a map where things can get a little wonky, especially there on Ilios. Well, what do you think we see on these points? I think we see a lot of dive, and I'm hoping for the first time this evening to see some hog, actually. Uh, you, you can get some pretty cheeky picks on well. Uh, I imagine we'll see some Lucio, and for that reason, we might see a little bit more of dive compositions. We've seen the wrecking ball come out from both sides wrecking ball is a pretty good asset to have on these ilios maps i could see it either way but i mean what more are you expecting from any cc at night but the coolest action around Oh, that was a question? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, God. I <laughs> oh, that was a question. Just, I thought, hey, hey, you got to wake up over just, there. Wake up over I there. I thought you were just finger gunning to chat. I was like, uh, what more am I expecting? I'm expecting double shield Torb on Ilios. Well, just give me a Torb. I haven't seen Torb at all tonight. It's all I want. Come on, before I go to bed. I bet they do it. Uh, in, I bet they do it in spawn. They just sit there with the Torb waiting. I hope so. If they're listening, do it for me. <laughs> Tokyo has been talking about Roadhog all night in chat, though. So True. I would love it True. if we actually just got a Roadhog in the lobby for once and then the copy pastas could just be unleashed upon match chat. That'd be kind of fun. I, I think that'd be pretty fun. I'd have to agree with you. Uh, but it looks like we are setting up on Ilios. We're going to be sending here very, very shortly to our map five. Now, that was a draw previously. So. It's still 2-1 in favor of the Ottawa Braves. And the tiebreaker, if we do so go to it, will be Junkertown, which if continues the trend of tonight, I don't want to put the cart before the horse, but if it continues the trend of the night, I don't believe they will actually finish because Junkertown is one of the more fun, more famous maps to not finish um, in that style of, of payload. It's it's pretty easy to stop around those corners. So, but I, I imagine we won't get there. I imagine one of these two teams will come out on top on control. And if it's the Braves, it'll be the set. If it's the Toros, well, to Australia we're headed. Nuke, given that we are on Ilios well to start things off here in Greece, I don't see any road hogs. I don't think we're gonna see one tonight, and my heart is breaking. No Torbjorns either. Does that just shatter your your soul? I don't think I'll have any dreams when I go to bed, Nuke. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have but one dream, and it's casting with you. And here we are as we move into Aww. this map five. Oh, oh. CSU DH Toros trying to get to this point first. They're actually going to see it in the form of numbers. Ottawa Braves opting to go around the backside of this point getting to this overhang and taking control, which is typically a good place to hold first because you have a lot of coverage. Yeah, and they hit the aggression there to just back the Toros around that initial corner. Simplistic catches numbers out. Danny gets flailed down by Toki as well. No damage dealers on the side of CSUDH will just absolutely cause a reset here, and I love it. The Braves pushing the aggression, going up, getting this long sight line all the way to the Toros spawn. And kind of sending a message with this first fight. CS who DH? CS okay. Yo DH taking the first fight to the Braves, but the Braves shutting them down, you know, ticking up now 25, 26%. But they do have, I almost feel like every time I say they have an ultimate online, it's Night Fury's Amplification Matrix. And wow, speaking of Immortality Field, gonna save both him and Cheshire Cat at the last moment. Danny. Also having the Pulse Bomb online, but falling to Tyrell's uh, minefield, which had dropped in the back line. 
CSU DH drops the amplification matrix, trying to get a couple of picks onto the Braves, but they're going to find themselves in the middle of a gravitic flux as gravity has taken a turn for the worst, and the Braves will hold this defense. We're going to see Maelstrom kind of in the back line with numbers, causing a bit of a havoc, actually probably flipping this point. Lump going to get there in time to try to contest, and it will come out. Now 65%. The Toros have wasted a lot of time just being staggered on this point. Yeah, the Toros didn't want to quit in that fight, but I think you and I both know at this point, hindsight always being 20-20, that staying around in that last fight probably makes this their final chance to flip the objective. They've got a lot of ultimates to work with, about as good alt economy as you could hope for. That pulse bomb takes down Sunsinger. The transcendence gets popped here from Simplistic, and right when that ends, we have the EMP Ooh. coming in from numbers. That should seal this fight and the flip for the Taros, but the Braves have played well to this point. They could bounce back, come back very quickly to try and retake. But what did it cost Alt Charge? And the answer is almost everything as they had to expend four ultimates to win that fight over. But you look at the charge and they're actually getting up pretty quick. CSUDH pulling out these numbers taking the damage to them. The Braves, though, will have Tac Visor online for the next fight, and it could be a pretty easy retake if they find the Toros out of position. Lump gets that first kill. Toki pops the rally to keep the team supported on their engagement. Two picks have now been found, and Tyrell attacked in the back line. He's in a dangerous spot, but no one seems to be able to sense him and take him down. Lump does fall there tonight, Fury, but the Tac Visor for Sun Singer finding a bit of value as Wiki Tricks falls. Now it looks like the Braves surround the well of the point, and overtime ticks down as they've gotten the flip. Maelstrom goes down, and there's not much contest left here for the Toros. A desperation transcendence pop. Danny throws in a pulse bomb. It sticks onto Sunsinger. They don't want to stay out of this fight just yet, but just more and more investments to come for the Braves, trying to put an end to this round. Sir able to take down a Cat with that final Sigma ultimate of the round, and Nuke. This should certainly be it. Certainly, but we're seeing a lot of comeback from CSU DH. They're trying to make their way back to point. Night Fury not going to uh, try to drop the Immortality Field. Going to fall immediately, and that's going to be Numbers, which I think will be all she wrote. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep, that will be it. Ottawa Braves will take the first point well <laughs> of, of Ilios and the members jumping to their deaths in the middle of the well to sacrifice themselves to the gods of Ilios. I love that little bit of Ilios too. One of the best maps to celebrate on as the round ends. It's just, it's almost like the victory lap of Overwatch when you have the whole team hopping in there in sync. But Nuke, we're going to be going over to Lighthouse now in what is match point. Thanks to the Ottawa Braves getting that first round of Li Zhang Tower. And we've got a little bit of a comp switch here from the Toros. They throw on the Moira and the Lucio. So looking to get a little more speed and some swift rotations on this Lighthouse point. Yeah, yeah, I personally like Lucio a lot on this point. I mean, Moira has a ton of value with the defensive and offensive ultimate, as well as the orbs getting these inside of these small corridors. The Braves, looks like they're going to stick with the comp that's been working with them. We'll see if that fares over to this map. Speaking of fares, you know what's crazy, Ultra Charge? I don't think we've seen a pharmacy at all this evening. No, we haven't, and that's a pretty good point you bring up because... I mean, we have seen Sunsinger on a lot of hit scan tonight, but still, especially in tonight's map pool, I mean, Hollywood, Gibraltar, Blizzard World, and now Ilios, mm -hmm. very good one for a far player, but maybe the rosters we've casted tonight don't have that designated far player, or they'd True. rather be playing the Echo or some other different flex DPS pick. But yeah, usually we almost always see a pharmacy. Yeah, it's a little, a little bit of a, a, a weird conundrum we're finding ourselves in. Braves will take this first point, though, pushing the Toros off almost immediately, not allowing them any leeway or any any route to get in. Looking at the alt charge, Tyrell does have Minefield online and could use it to space out the team. Trying to get to point. They're pushing in. Coalescence is going to come out. Minefield to follow suit. They are going to find a couple of picks to open up this fight. Night Fury having to invest a couple of different items to get out. Danny taking out Not Sir and the Braves finding themselves in a less than ideal situation. It looks like they're going to try to hold on point, take as much uh, point charge as they absolutely can, finding a couple of picks in the in the process. 
Now with 35%, they're a third of the way to victory. Sitting at a pretty good spot here. Maelstrom engages early, pop of the minefield down on that catwalk. And more ultimates to follow as Sura lifts Ooh. everyone up, slams Maelstrom down and makes him pay for overextending there on Wrecking Ball. But it's still just a five versus five here. Sunsinger also went down in that early engagement. Sunsinger just switched over to the Cole Cassidy to enter back on this point. EMP gets popped. Numbers with a good one there, finding many hacks, but Ooh. only two members go down so far. It's going to take Cat's Sound Barrier to Ooh. seal the deal on this fight. Yeah, Numbers is uh, doing a lot and, and finding all of the all of the ins and outs of the Ottawa Braves' back line, getting those hacks off, looking like Anonymous out here, doing doing a lot for the Toros, actually. That EMP was huge in that fight, finding the the hack onto the wrecking ball forced Tyrell actually to switch over to Winston, which is a pretty interesting pick for this point, especially playing into the comp that they have. I'd be surprised if we didn't see a switch out of the Toros if this pick works. It'd be difficult. The Toros speed that they've picked up this round has really done wonders for them, but early in this fight, Night Fury and Numbers both go down. The Diva D Mac, not sir, eats up that pulse bomb from Danny. And they needed that to find some picks if they wanted to stay in this fight. But instead, a very clean flip coming through for the Braves after just one hero switch. Yeah, that's, I think, now the third time that we've seen Maelstrom kind of dive in the back line and try to uh, get the Braves to turn around or put them in some sense of disarray and has paid for it both times. They, they have do dove in. Now trying to get to point, CSUDH going in full force, the minefield will be online. They are contesting, and with 77%, it's only going to be one or two fights more. Ottawa Braves still holding this point, 67% on the clock. The Tracer going to try to get back in fashion, but headshots all around to finish off the rest of the Braves. The Toros now 81%, three ultimates online, and the Braves making the switch now. Lump going to be back on the reaper interesting yeah and right now the toros are in end game mode as the emp and minefield both get popped ultimates coming out of cannons right now for the toros as they're looking to clean up swiftly but they've only gotten one pick for such a great investment so far and now it's a 5v5 5v4 toki falls now and the edge is in the favor of the toros as they take down sunsinger this one should be a wrap for them. We should be headed to ruins with a 1-1 one -one tie on Ilios, but Lump trying to deal some damage onto some tanks, trying to make one last statement here. Danny falls off the map. I don't know what's going to happen what? after that. Nuke. What? This one just got a lot more what? even, and a miraculous what? What? flip comes through for the Braves. Uh, uh, what? <laughs> I uh, actually paging thought... Danny? Uh, yeah, paging, paging Danny.exe has stopped functioning uh really really weird flip there i i definitely thought that that was the toros match but the braves with the clap back and Tor tyrell i really think opening up that for them lump was also able to get the point do a lot of damage in the meantime sun singer now with the emp will kick off this fight they're able to get the kill on to maelstrom here tyrell Pouncing on that wrecking ball, EMP'd, hacked, and nowhere to go. Now both tanks on the side of the Toros taken down. Ooh. Make it Danny and the back line as well, and there is no hope left, it seems, for the Toros as overtime starts to tick down. Tyrell flexing his <gasps> muscles there on point, but man, it's looking dangerous. Oh my god, emoting, and he's able to stay alive. <laughs> that is the match. That is the night. The Braves come away with the win. And what a close series. Honestly, this could have easily gone into a game, what would that be, 5-6, game 6. Uh, the Toros definitely showing the Braves that they got some sauce tonight, and uh, they're not going to be the team that they want to face in playoffs. Fantastic play of the game there from Lump in overtime as it looked like Danny just stepped into one of those Hellfire shots and Great cleanup there, switching over to Reaper very late, and it paid its dividends as the Braves were able to win. Nuke, it's 1240 where I live. <laughs> what do you say we wrap this one up? It's been a good night of Overwatch. It's been a wonderful night of Overwatch, and I have so much more casting to do this weekend. I'm excited to go to New York for the first time. It'll be an awesome time. But once again, 
It's been another Thursday night, and you've ended it yet again with our beautiful faces. If you'd like to follow up with what we're doing on a week-to-week -week basis, you can follow us on the links below. I'm at Chase Newcomb, and Alt Charge is over there at Alt Charge. Uh, we, we, we post some pretty interesting content we like to see. And like I said, if you want to know the story of Big Fish, DM Alt Charge on Twitter. He'll tell you all about it. It's a good one. Um, but I've been Chase Nuclear Newcomb. This has been Berkeley Alt Charge Seat Stevens. And it's been yet another amazing Thursday of Overwatch. Before we throw it out, I'd love to give a quick shout out, massive shout out to the people behind the desk, the people who make it possible Caroline Shaw and Tofu sitting on production, making this production what it's been tonight. And uh, awesome. Congrats to the Ottawa Braves for taking this series 3-1. That draw in the middle was clutch from CSUDH, but it won't quite take us all the way to the end of the map six. And I think that's all we have for you. Uh, I've been Chase Newcomb. This has been Alt Charge. And have an awesome weekend.